Hello and welcome to episode 41 of the Critical Twits Gaming Podcast. Today we'll take a look at brand new tabletop RPG, Mutant Gen Lab Alpha. Welcome back. We are the Critical Twits. More specifically, I'm Brian Ennis. I'm Aaron Ravinsky. I'm Joe Lewin. And today we're joined by two very special guests. I'm Natasha Ravinsky. And I'm Rob. Um, who are members of our role-playing group, who have for the last month and a half been playing Mutant Year Zero Gen Lab Alpha with us. We have already talked about Mutant Year Zero, the original game, quite extensively back in episode two. Um, we'll pop a link up for people to go back in time and have a listen to that. The post-apocalyptic special. The post-apocalyptic part special part two. Yeah, back when we did multi-part episodes if because I... we were weird. Yeah, because we could shut up mostly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we've covered that quite extensively. We will recap a little bit of that for those who are new um, and just to sort of take us into talking about the, uh, the new game. Um, but this has been a bit slightly different um, from last time in that Rob has been running the game. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome. Uh, which means that actually it's the first time I've bought a role play book and not read the entire thing in uh, a million years. Mm. Um, so we need Rob uh, in order to actually tell us if the second half of the book is actually any good. Mm. Um, so no pressure, but also lots of pressure make it good. Let's go. This is where I confess live on air that I've never actually read the back half of the book either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's good. Done. <laughs> it's a lie. I have <laughs> several times. Yeah, this is the thing because you're you're the kind of person I will read a, a role play book once and go, I kind of know what's happening and I can make everything else up. Whereas you will read and read and reread and recheck and. I spent so much time. Trying to GM on D and D, which is rafts of tables and all the rest, and not having the confidence, I felt the numbers would boost me that way. Yeah, having played other games and got more into it and DM'd a lot more, I'm going, no, I can fluff that. I've got the rough idea. I can just run with it. Yeah, yeah. Which sometimes I do in Gen Lab. Other times I do. I find a table. I roll the dice and I go with what it tells me. Other times I've just gone. Oh, that looked like fun, and it'd be kind of appropriate now. Let's do that. Yes. So you say it's got that kind of flexibility to be able to do either, depending on your mood or how tired you are, or oh, how absolutely, good the scene yeah. is. Um, Gen Lab doesn't have the threat cards yeah. that we so enjoyed when it kept. Well, certainly Brian enjoyed with yes, Zero. Yes. Yeah. We certainly we'll, didn't. We'll come, we'll come, we'll come to those <laughs> in a, in a yeah. second, okay. but yeah, that that's a very good uh, good thing. And. I think it's interesting to see how it, it sort of works differently. Uh, but just to sort of explain what it is, um, we did do an, an unboxing video because it was kickstarted back in February into the beginning of March mm-hmm. um, and fulfilled um, by the start of July, which is actually very, very quick. Uh, the reason for that is they didn't have to make the game up from scratch. Um, the Mutant Year Zero and Gen Lab Alpha are both published in the UK and America by Modifius Games, but the, they're based on a Swedish role playing game published by Free League Press or Friar Ligon, which I've probably pronounced wrong, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, um, Friar Ligon, I believe. Friar Ligon, there we go. <laughs> in the interest of pedantry, it's also, we talk, we mentioned Don't the do that original Year Zero. Does. I know it does, it's great. <laughs> The original Year Zero actually goes back to the 80s. Yes, yeah. So we're talking, when we talk about Year Zero being the original, we're talking about the original reboot. Yes. Or the latest reboot. Yeah, so it was sort of resurrected, brought back from the dead a few years ago, um, but is based on that that 80s RPG that then kind of morphed into Mutant Chronicles, which is still kicking around and is probably more popular now, I think. Certainly to look at Modifius' forums... Yeah, they've got somewhere in the region of two thousand posts for Mutant Chronicles. Conan is next at fifteen hundred, then it's Infinity at twelve hundred, and everything else just falls away. Yeah, like a wet cake. Um, so we did a we did an unboxing video 
just to show people what you got in the Kickstarter and what's still available. So again, we'll pop another little link up there if you want to actually see things um, in the flesh. And they're glorious. They are. Mm. What do we think of them as a physical product before we get too much into the other things? Just on sort of the quality of the bits and pieces. As a physical product, uh, I mean, we've played a bunch of different roleplay systems. We've, yes. We've used a bunch of different books that I don't own. So I've looked through <laughs> <laughs> I've looked through loads of stuff and trying to find things and, and what happens and just just the quality of the, the way it's set up, the the artwork, the way they've used colours on the page, everything works really nicely. Yeah. Um, having their own purpose built dice for it again as well is a very, very nice yeah, it's it's a nice system. Yeah, it's a nice touch. I mean, you could quite easily get away without them, but they make a, make the system a lot easier. I think because yeah. of the colour coded and they've got the symbols on the right ways, and you yeah. know the yellow dice is ones are really really dangerous compared to the green dice is ones because they've got a marker that scares you. I actually yeah. think that that that's the point, and that's why I think this is such a good product. Is you don't need to buy all the extra shit. Yeah. You don't need to buy the cards. You don't need to buy the dice. You don't need to buy any of that. But, but they're all worth the money for yeah. something you don't need. Yeah, they, they, there's there's enough in them that you'll go. Oh, I don't need it, but I want those. And yeah, yeah. pick them up. But like you said, the yeah. actual the book itself is nicely laid out. I mean, I've tried flicking through some of the others, being fairly new to role play compared to the rest of you, and I've got lost on on quite. <laughs> yeah, and I've got lost in quite a few, a few of them. Just been yeah. just been a mess. Whereas this, I've gone. Oh, I need to know what this is. Flick that page. Cool. Blah, 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 find it. Done. Yeah, it's been quick and simple. Do we think full color is the new standard for role playing books? Yes. Yeah. Some don't need it. I would say. Yeah. I don't think Mind Jammer would benefit from color. I don't think it's oh. necessary, but mm. I think it's expected. I think if yeah. I opened up a new role play book now and it was all in black and white, I'd be a bit. Mm. If Va- unless it massively fit the setting. Yeah, I was gonna say Vampire mm. the Masquerade. I would happily have that in black and white because it fits with that kind of horror. Yeah, that I like it stuff. better. The second edition. New world, new world of darkness, is color color artwork. Yeah, I don't like it. No, okay. The, the black and white is more brooding, but even mm. then, you've still got page effects. It's not just a blank white page that the text got, is on. It's textured. Well, it's visually textured. Yes, they've yeah. got fragments to it, and. Again, Mind Jam has got that watermarking essentially. Yeah. There are lots of other games to that. But yeah, even the, the more recent um, indie starters, the likes of Simba Room, the artwork is colour, the writing is all black and white, but the page is done to look like parchment. It's still full colour. Yeah. 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 Now, is. Oh, shit, I think I've just completely lost the point I was going to make. Okay, I'll go to one. Yeah, you go first. <laughs> Well, you see, that sort of thing psychologically tends to be quite important because if you're faced with a big ream of text, like in a normal textbook or just a big black and white page, it's too much to take in, even if the writing's simplified. With it being done in parchment, or there being different things to attract your attention, the colour pictures, the, the different backgrounds of the text and stuff help you process that information a little bit more because it helps break it down for your eyes to and take it. And it looks less intimidating. Yeah. <coughs> so... I mean, with the colour aspect of things as well, it's just going on a slight tangent, I think we are, but um, like as, as the, the member of the group that struggles with colour sometimes, yeah. um, are things done in colour because colour is a very subjective thing? Like, different people like different colours, different people like things to be vibrant, some like it. Like you said, oh no, I prefer this because it's broody. You can mm. do broody in colour, but it's much harder to do. So... I think this is that, that's where colour isn't ne- necessarily needed and can be a bit much. But actually, I, I would say that, that something being a full colour product is the standard yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, it probably sounds about right. Yeah, yeah I mean... In it, your past experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've flicked through a couple of the books, but that's about it. Yeah, I I, there's sort of advances in sort of printing techniques and accessibility of printing and how cheap it is to actually produce something that's mm. full colour. Yeah, I just um, it, it feels like a premium product. That's yes, kind does. of where I was, was yeah, going. Yeah. Um, the hardbacks are really, really sturdy. Uh, the mutant ones that we've used quite a lot are holding up. Mm-hmm. Year Zero. Original. Oh, God. <laughs> it's going to get confusing quickly. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're holding up. Um, everything is solid. And 
yeah, full colours throughout. Just feels like you've got kind of got your money's worth. Yeah, yeah. One one yeah. of the things actually that I will point out from because we we had some uh, the gaming group that uh, we linked to recently, the Normal Cross Crusaders. Yeah. Um, they made got their own set of dice printed, yeah. as it were. So it had their logo on, which was cool. I bought a bunch of those and found that now I can go back and find dice that have blank sides because it's all chipped off. The mutant dice... Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was printed onto the dice. It's not, not a long-lasting product. These ones have no doubt you have a couple that aren't that have obviously had a slight issue with printing a bit of blur to the edge yeah but but essentially the 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 dice themselves are hard wearing and really really good yeah and we do misuse the, use the <laughs> we misuse dice aaron pushes them up his nose when he's bored um but even like the cards and stuff with the powers on they're a they're a good quality um bit of cardboard yeah you know as well they're not as much as again we use them a lot and pass them around and they're not easily folding and breaking and everything else so yeah I, th- I think labelling it as a premium product is yeah. very much deserved Gen Lab Alpha is kind of a it's a standalone spin-off from the original Mutant Year Zero game you don't need the original Mutant Year Zero book or anything like that mm-hmm. to play it they share a world yes um, and the rules are fully compatible you can use abilities from one and classes from the uh, from each to sort of spot between you yeah. could have the original human mutants mixing with the animal mutants of gen lab alpha if you so desire so there is potential for crossover um we've started a brand new campaign um of gen lab alpha but there was nothing to stop me as the dm of the original mutant game just using the new rules and bringing in options for um animal mutants as well absolutely i mean when gen lab was first announced and we looked at it i kind of went I'm not very interested. Use them for the um, use them for the animal mutants we've got kicking around as NPCs in our Year Zero setting. Yeah. But playing the campaign within Gen Lab didn't appeal to me because it was too separate. Well, it's, I just for some reason the whole theme of it wasn't grabbing me. Then I read more about it and I've fallen in love. Yeah. yeah. Hence DMing it. To be honest, <laughs> I think I was feeling fairly similar because. I enjoyed Mutant mostly because it wasn't very much. A, it wasn't a structured campaign. We kind of just did our own thing, um, yeah, and I yeah. think we did things very differently to the way most people do. In the way that we do that with everything we play, I think. To yeah, extent. I think I think every group takes things and tweaks things in and, their own yeah, style. You'll, you'll get combat heavy groups. You'll get uh, role play heavy groups. I think we're somewhere of the, on the side of the role play heavier line. Yeah, yeah. But not too much. We still enjoy a good combat and a good like fighty character and everything else. But with Gen Lab, I've been quite pleasantly surprised that it's got it's far more of a structured campaign in what happens. But there's a lot more free. It's it's but it's not as rigid as something like following the Rise of the Rune Lords book or something yes. like that. Yeah, it it very much both games present you with a scenario mm-hmm. and then allow your group to approach that in the way that it that they want so in the original mutant you have the arc that your humanoid mutants are um building yeah. well living in trying to keep ticking over having to leave to go and explore and scavenge and such like in gen lab alpha then um both games set far in the future mm-hmm. the earth something terrible has happened yeah, it's a reference a, to a red plague in both books in yes. the players section so oh, okay. it's not a spoiler ah cool excellent <laughs> um, yeah that's just one thing we, we will try to avoid spoilers as much as possible um, and that's again part of why Rob is here because he knows what we've what of what we've played he's made up yeah. and what of what we've played is in Mm. the back of the book and could be considered spoilery because I'm sure you've been adding embellishing and adding twists to things in your own style as you go along oh yes That's yeah, thing, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah set set far in the uh, in the future um, but rather than having a huge kind of zone as you do in, in Mutant Year Zero Gen Lab Alpha if you use the campaign from the book is set in Paradise Valley so as a as a kind of analogy it's Mutant Year Zero is much more of a, an open sandbox for the players because there is a giant map yeah. that you can go off and explore. Whereas it feels like 
it has those sandbox elements, but Gen Lab has a much more confined area to work within. The, the zone maps for Year Zero are something like twenty miles by twelve. Yes. So giving you a huge number of sectors to explore. Yeah. To Paradise a... Valley oh, measures about thirty to thirty-five miles across. I would say. So in sort of diameter. Yeah. Because the, because the map isn't top down. Yeah, mm. that's something we could look to produce ourselves, and you've got the mountains of the way. It's difficult to yeah. judge quite, but, but scale-wise, is about thirty miles across. Okay. It's so it's a lot th- less complicated. It's a lot less dense with locations. This, this is the thing. Whereas that's that's Paradise S- Valley is about being the wild. Yeah, yes. yes. Part yeah. of you is a wild animal. It's yeah. and it's yeah. split up into this territory, that territory, this territory, that territory, and some other little bits. Yeah. Whereas Gen Lab has. Year zero, sorry. 200 odd squares to explore. Yeah. Which each of those squares could be something vastly different to the last one. Because you can randomise it and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And that, and that's what I mean. It might be in a bigger mm. area, but there's it's almost less going yeah. on in, in a weird way. At least it feels that way as a player. I don't yeah. know if you Not in a bad agree. way. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing this as a positive. Yeah, yeah. Year zero has empty space. Yeah. Where yeah. it's yeah. just monsters, so maybe, or something, a burning desert. Something yeah. that's hostile to life yeah everywhere in gen lab alpha uh, with a couple of notable exceptions could be populated just looking at the the sort of the setting and the the, the campaigns themselves mutant year zero is very much there is a meta plot there's an overarching plot mm-hmm. that kind of ticks away in the background gen lab alpha as you said has a more structured system it has sort of expectations and my reading is it's it will last us approximately a year Mm -hmm. of gaming before we resolve the storyline in the main book and the final chapter then goes to taking the animals out into the wider world bringing them to the zone even either a different zone to where your arc mutants live or bringing them to the same one, yeah, and blending both campaigns together, which is quite yes. nice. Yeah, yeah it so it, it does feel much more tightly focused. Although the actual square footage or square mileage of Paradise Valley might be comparable to a full zone, um, it's less dense. There's a lot less going on, and mm. it's a known world. You know, as you said, the different tribes. We'll come to those in a second, but you know what roughly what's where, what's 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 around mm. and it has a, a much tighter focus you play the resistance so paradise valley is inhabited by human animal hybrids divided up into tribes as we've touched on yes. who um stick together based on the, the sort of the base type of their their animal so you've got as we said dog tribe cat tribe badger rat reptile uh ape the bear yeah, and one. rabbit. Yeah. It's yeah. the other two. Infamous rabbit. rabbits. Yes. So. Um, but, like, being... You're not... If you're from dog tribe, mm-hmm. you're not just, like, a domestic dog. You could be a fox. You could be a Hyena. wild dog. Hyena's dog. The... Each tribe um, in Gen Lab, they list the three most common animals. Yeah. So, for dog, it's dog, wolf, fox. Yeah. yeah. And because they happen to be very hierarchical in dog tribe... That's sort of the standing order. You could then play any other canine you care to mention. They're just within the realms of the animal powers that we'll come to yeah. in a later bit. They're just very few. Yeah. For instance, there's moose tribe. It's a, um, the examples are moose, elk, and deer. Mm. We have a yak. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> and the yak <laughs> seem to be the most. It best fits in the moose tribe, both mechanics-wise yeah. and in terms of up on the mountains, wide-ranging. Yeah. Yeah, travelling, very seldom seen. We'll stick it with the bunch of social yeah. outcasts who don't like people. Yeah. yeah, and so each tribe has its own little set of powers that you can sort of pick and choose from. And unlike in Mutant Year Zero, where you draw a random mutation and that's what you get, you you actually pick this time. So yes. you can decide on a type of animal and you get two powers. Or one animal power and one mutant power if you wanted to be is it tainted yes yes so you can be a tainted animal that has been experimented on by the bad guys of the campaign the watchers and 
the ga- game starts with you essentially either joining or forming a resistance against the Watchers to try to escape Paradise Valley or at least overthrow their control. Yeah, and reclaim it for the animals. Yes. Yeah. Because Paradise Valley, we haven't touched on, but it is also a cage. The yes. entire thing is yeah. surrounded by 20 foot high electric fences with mm. gun turrets that. You know, that glow and have their own intelligence. And mm. something that I think actually you should... haven't braved yet. So there's other stuff that you won't. Find <laughs> later. Considering we can't handle streams, I'm not handling yeah. electric fences. Yeah, yeah. Was... don't cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we always nearly drown. Good advice. Now, what one thing? Okay, I did... GM note to self: <laughs> make those guns water cannon. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, your point. <laughs> yeah, um, one of the things I think quite is quite interesting because, like you say, the the defenses and the the, the stuff they use to split the zones up are all these really high fences you don't get anything there, there are no avian mutants no in there no. Um, there are burrowing animals yeah yes such as the the rabbits yeah, but it's much sure. easier to go no the fences go underground to piss off than it is to go <laughs> you can't fly over them because stuff yeah so uh, like I, I thought it'd be a really nice idea to play some kind of, especially with things like the seer and stuff. A raven seer would, would be a really nice thing. But yes, yeah. But I can understand why they've not done it. Yeah. Um, they could have done something with wing clipping or something else, but I think it then becomes. Or a dome. Y- yeah, but I like the fact they've left them out. I can see why they have because I yeah. think it adds more complications than yes. bonuses it brings. <laughs> yeah. There have been discussions online. I, um, I know you've been looking at the forums e- a lot. Even within the Kickstarter, people going, "Oh, I want to do bats," and I'm wondering, do Ooh, I no. do I make them glide? Do I make them fly? Do I just use the flying mutation from Year Zero? Yeah. And obviously, those are options. If you take a tainted mutant, there's a one in fifty chance that you might get wings. Yeah. At which point, yes. You could fly over if it weren't for the guns. Yeah. So yeah. you could do that. However, if there's a tribe of bats, they've mostly been shot down. Yeah. So it's kind of, they're neither here nor there. Yeah, that's true. Because if, if you've got guns that can see above the tree line... As soon as you above it. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, no, okay. If somebody wants to things. play, or someone wants to throw in a bird tribe, you can easily go for it. What you can't do is give them flight. Mm-hmm. And given that it's hybridising... Human bones are too heavy to achieve manual flight. Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. could give them the ability so, to maybe glide. Hmm. Do longer jumps. Longer jumps, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, you could play a flying, in quotes, squirrel or a sugar glider yeah. so in, a, with, in Rat Tribe, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, actually, Using the rules, you'd throw, say, jumper and climber, because I started speculating and discussing on this and what you could do with yeah. bats and various others. I was really mean because I picked about 47 different kinds of animals <laughs> that, that didn't quite fit the normal tribe and then made Rob work out how they'd work and then changed my mind and was a yak. Because <laughs> yeah. at one point I was an ot- I was going to be an otter, wasn't yeah. I? Because I love otters. Yeah. And a red panda. I was a red panda as well. Yeah, yeah that was going to was going to be a red panda. And I have to say, each one mm. took about ten minutes of flicking through the animal powers. Ah, so I only wasted okay. four hundred and seventy well, minutes of <laughs> life. That's all. No, no, I, fun. We, d- yeah. Again, it's gone online. It's been discussed. There's one chap um, in Australia. He's looking to convert all the animal tribes that don't really match with the animals they've got there. Yeah, and bringing the marsupials. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Which yeah. is a yeah, a lovely idea. I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. This is one of the things I quite like about the mutant community in general. I mean, uh, Mutant Year Zero came for us with a map of London, basically. Yeah, and or New somewhere, York. Yeah, or New York, York on the back. Yeah. Um, but there's people who've made maps up of their home cities and they inco- actively encourage you to do it. And The, the book really, it, yeah. The yeah, Swedish yeah. ones, um, the map is Stockholm. Yeah. There are... Well, we got more maps in the Gen Lab unboxing. You'll, yeah. You'll have shown yeah. them. And it's, yes. it's the whole community is a lot of, oh, how can we tweak this? And there's a lot of communication and support many... from each other to help make these things work. Sorry. I'm amazed how many online map-altering thing resources are available. Yeah. I've seen people use various different ones. And, yeah, if I were to run Year Zero, I'd probably grab a map of somewhere we don't know. Yes. Yeah. still fairly close, say, Leicester. Yeah. And use that. Hmm. So, I mean, as a before we move on to the next bit, I, th- I think this is a really nice, massive positive for the Year Zero and for Gen Lab is quite how adaptable as systems they are. Yeah. 
<laughs> with gen lab, like you said, you, you can go, oh, I don't want those animals, I want these ones instead, and you can change things around. Um, for Year Zero, you can use a map of wherever. It, it allows you to be very, very creative as a character player and as the DN to go, no, we're doing things this yeah. way around. And I, I know you can do it in other systems, but the... The simplicity mm. and nowhere near that that's not a bad thing. The simplicity that they use for the rules in Gen Lab and in Mutant Year Zero allows such a diverse yeah. changing of things if you want to. It's yeah. the discovery aspect I think to it. Again, why yeah. we're talking in vagaries because bits and pieces will be discovered. Yeah. You go out into the zone knowing nothing yes. in Year Zero. In Gen Lab, you know the area but you don't know yeah. who your allies are going to be, how, where you'll do well with the resistance. The rules are all, this is how you survive. This is in the player section. The dice rolling and mechanics in the GM section, at least for Gen Lab, I've not read the Year Zero ones, is this is how you simulate the environment. This is how you can do it randomly. Feel free to pick. Yeah. yeah. These are just some suggestions. Go for it. Yeah, you can throw in this, you can throw in that, you can put those two together. It's There are little sidebars... Almost like the writers have just gone, oh, we could do that. It might be a bit complicated, but we'll suggest it to them. Yes. yes. And that bit's made my imagination mm-hmm. spark. It's got the creativity. That's awesome. But because the details are in my GM section, yeah. if I want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and just go, well, you guys got the rules on the mechanics, how it all works, I've come up with a completely different story for Inside Paradise Valley, you will not know. Yeah. No. Not until we finish it, walk out into the zone and maybe, maybe I let you walk, uh, read the back bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then there are bits in there that you might not find out before we re- resolve the story, yeah. if you guys even survive to that point, because this <laughs> is mutant and it can be vicious. If yeah. we have to yeah. go to Monkey Island, we're all dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if we get there, there'll be loads of really great jokes and we'll have a great time. Um, yes. We've touched on this a little bit, but the, the next on my trying to keep some kind of order to the noises that we make thing <laughs> is character creation and mm. the characters themselves. And we've touched on the fact that said you've got these broad categories these broad tribes of of animals but you can pretty much fit in any mammal into that trying to yeah yeah. i would like to be a whale (laughs) that that isn't water-based or uh, like purely water-based or you could do a whale yeah you could there is nothing stopping you human whale hybrid could get out the water think island yeah. of Dr Moreau yeah um, well it, it just in the various if you, if you annoyed me I could just put my finger in your blowhole so you'd have blue have died <laughs> blue <Blue-er. laughs> <laughs> the, the only mechanical <laughs> alteration I'd take is to break the sonar mutation mm. into a couple of different powers Mm-hmm. Give those as options and throw in a couple of the other mutant powers that I think um, the animal powers from that already exist in the book yeah. game. Yeah. Because you can just reinterpret what the rules do. And yeah, if you, and this if you exactly want to glide, take jumper. Yeah. Your it's, hair, Aaron's yeah. got the jumper ability. You yeah. can you get to make a double move yeah. for a mutation point. You could easily do that with a flying squirrel or yeah, any kind of bird mutant you wanted yeah. without yeah. breaking the game in any way mm, yeah because yeah. you're using what's already there and just sort of repurposing it. yeah so yeah. And, and that's it that, that but the ability the fact we've just gone i've made a stupid joke about an animal i want to be and we go actually we could do it this way yeah and that's taken no time at all to completely redo a, yeah. an animal species yeah. slash tribe yeah. yeah so if you've got a favorite kind of kind of animal you could play that animal, discuss with your uh, your DM, and, and work out how it would fit. Or if you can't figure out how to do it, make a post on the forum, and Rob will see it. And it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think that lends itself to being not just a standalone book, and it is about the same thickness as Mutant Year Zero. Mm. Yeah. But having Gen Lab as an expansion, it's how to handle animal mutants as players, how to balance them with muta- with the arc mutants. Yeah, the human-based mutants. Yeah, going with that. So you can just use the book as an expansion, and it's lovely as an expansion. But I think yeah. you lose something by not playing through this resistance story. Yeah, because it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say any more. Yeah, I, I, lie, have, but, yeah. I have massively been enjoying it so far. Yeah, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that because we'll we'll make a more focused section on that in a, in a minute. Um, but going back to to characters then. Um, what I'd like to do is actually pick on Tash. Yeah. Um, because um, this is actually your first tabletop 
role playing game, isn't it? My first proper one. I've had. I've done three one offs to World of Darkness and a Malifaux, mm. but at least one of those, the character creation was already done. It was just here, play this person. Yeah. So this is the first time I actually properly made a character and actually looked at fitting the rules and which is new for me because all the role plays I'm used to doing are online via email which is just collaborative writing rather yeah. than with rules and dice and systems. I suppose you're actually now having to consider character progression rather yeah. than just it does this thing for this event. Yeah. So yeah, it becomes a bit of a different Yeah, so how experience. did you find as someone who probably like a lot of the people that are listening is fairly new to the system how did you find the character creation process it was really easy it was really nice it's everything's nice and simply explained the system is very sort of streamlined in that respect Mm -hmm. it was more just a matter of learning okay you need to do the to do something like this you need these things um so i it's quite simple in that respect and I did quite I didn't have much problem I think I created my squirrel in about 20 minutes yeah yeah which yeah. to be honest for uh, I think we're going to discuss this in the future at some point but for character creation for a, a role-playing game yeah I think I'd struggle making a, as a as a seasoned Dungeons Dragon 3.5 player I'd struggle making a full character in 20 minutes having thought everything through selecting everything doing it especially if you're not level one yes yeah a level one character with a starting package as you know talking 3.5 yeah D&D lingo you might just manage yeah yeah so for a new player to come into a new system they've never played before and go oh that's what I am yeah yeah you know yeah, roughly yeah. where you're going. It's go really nice. Yeah. Fine way of Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes you go right. I'd like my character to develop like this. Oh, what do I take? There's so many things. I don't know what's going to happen. I've got to do this first and then this. And yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah. not so bad with this. No, there's yeah. very much. A, I kind of like to be able to do. Oh, I want to do this and I want to do this, but it's easier to go. Okay, I want to do these things, but it makes sense for being the sort of hunter character that I am to be have this this and this so I'll start with these and then I'll see how I get on with them and then develop things as I get used to the system and the character yeah I think yeah. Um, just for using the, the the lingo as it were like I think Tash sort of mentioned it there that's that you don't have many prerequisites for stuff yeah. in or prerequisites sorry thank you for uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I annoyed myself with that Rob um, you don't have many prerequisites did you just pedant yourself yeah I did <laughs> cool um, with Rob's help um, um, bizarrely I'm fine with that <laughs> But you, you don't you don't have many. You don't. It's not like oh, I, I want to take um, the ability to twirl around with two swords in my hand. So I need two weapon fighting, and I need this, and I need that, and I need this that doesn't play into it, but it's part of the weird progression path. Uh, you, no, no I, I want to be able to eat my feelings like your yeah. squirrel does. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I want to take comfort eater. I will just take that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Done. Um, yeah. Not rather than say playing something like Pathfinder or D&D where it's like I need to be strength 17 and have this feat and this ability and this class thing yeah, and yeah. then it links I mean, in and but sort of having to plan a lot ahead yeah. I feel you're more able to let your character to, develop naturally yeah like oh we, we had a, <laughs> animals <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had a, loads and loads of combat this week and done loads of fighting it makes sense that my character's got better at fighting so yes. I'll spend their yeah. advance I found that. myself doing that through yeah. this campaign actually because I want I started doing a little bit towards the end of the year zero one but just marking off and every time I succeed at skill going well I'm getting better at those things so it makes sense my character I don't feel like I'm nerfing myself in any way by spreading my skills out yeah. I could streamline perfect but this is a system that doesn't reward you for doing that unlike Dungeons and Dragons where you need to be going down a particular progression route to be able to cope yeah. this is you can manage on those things as well as anybody else is going to manage or anybody can really it's, manage it, a mutant campaign. Feels, it feels much more roleplay focused yeah. in that there's lots more options for things to do outside of combat. Quite often the challenges you're overcoming are not things with guns or things with knives they, they, or monsters. They are the environment. They're running out of food. They're, how do we get over that mountain to go and see the people we need to see on the other side? Yeah. Uh, how do we get past this mm. checkpoint of watchers? Because we've all instinctively gone, anytime the watchers have turned up, gone, 
run away, do what they say, keep away from them, mm-hmm. because if they were easy to fight and deal with, then we'd have dealt with them already. <laughs> so we've instinctively kind of gone, oh, there's a checkpoint and there's four, there's four watchers there, keep away from that. Yeah. And actually, when we've when we've encountered one watcher, mm. it was hard as nails. Yeah. <laughs> you, you say instinctively, we did run through that Oh, start-up. yeah, yeah. The, sort of the, the setting the scene adventure. The yeah. book advises you to run it this way to choose a single player character just because odds on your players will all want to play different animals as indeed has happened with us. You're all different tribes. Yeah. 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 Focus on one character. Give them a bad experience with the Watchers. Mm-hmm. Set that up. Make the whole table dislike the Watchers, want to rebel, yeah. want to be that revolution and then get into the game. Yeah. Yes. It's quite. It gives you the key events within that scenario to do. The rest of it is left up to you. Yeah. Which I felt slightly intimidated still. I hadn't DM'd for months. Yeah. That was ever so slightly, but I sat down and worked out kind of what I was going to do. Bits got slightly thrown as people came back and decided to choose different animals, and I'm sort of going, Sorry, dude. (laughs) (laughs) But. You say people was mostly me, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but I do have enough experience to have the confidence to do that. Mm. You don't need that much experience, to be honest, to do that. You just need the confidence. Yeah. Because this game runs itself mechanically. Um, the way it works is that there's not that many choices, which I think no. for something... this. When you say something simple, it doesn't. Something can be simple and have depth. Yes, it has a few key ideas, but then you add on or you um, you can do things with them or surprise yourself with different combinations of those simple things. So, although the character sheet itself is fairly uncluttered and fairly simple, there's a lot that can then be sort of bolted on. Mm. So, we're not saying necessarily that it's a super simple system in that it lacks depth. It's an elegant system. Well, it, that's, yeah. that's a great it's, word, It's Rob. simple, but it's not shallow. Yes, yeah. Um, so your choices are, you decide um, essentially how old you're going to be. Yeah. The older your character is, the more standing they have, the more they're looked up to by other animals, the more they can sort of dominate other animals and face them down and not have to fight. Like an, an animal will pin another animal yeah. to the ground. Which or, is new to this. Which is new to this, yeah. Yeah, age is not something you encounter in year zero where you're all young adults. Mm. Yeah. The only person that isn't is it's suddenly a, a bit unavailable <laughs> and uh, it has left you all up what not creep without a paddle. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you've... Um, the, this gives you, <coughs> excuse me, the, the Dominate actually is different to Mutant Year Zero. It has... Um, it's Dominate in place of Manipulate. Manipulate, which humans yeah. can do. And yes. mutants do not wheedle, cajole and all the yeah. rest, as, dis- as they put it in the book. It feels yeah. like there's more consequence to the, it in this campaign. Well, you, you have an additional yeah. stat. Yes. You have your rank. Yeah. yeah. So And your rank can... If someone of a lower rank than you beats you in a dominance conflict, your rank will reduce. Yeah, because you've been... Yeah. Yeah. You've been shown yeah. up. Yeah. We're, so we're still getting ahead of ourselves, though, because we haven't even gone to the basic character creation, yeah. the, the categories. Yeah. Have you not listened to us before? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I have. So, <laughs> progression, development joke, come on. You yes. don't do I better. don't like change. S- strive to be a little bit better every day. <laughs> you, um, you then... Based on how old you are, you get a certain number of attribute points that you put into your four attributes, which are strength, agility, wits, wits, and instinct. instinct. And they are your uh, they your four. So you, you do that each one of those whenever you roll a, a stat, um, a check against that stat, or with a skill that uses that stat, is a dice. So it's a nice simple dice pool system, very similar to World of Darkness. It's mm. kind of number of dots you have. Um, equals a dice but they all also act as hit points so your character might be physically very strong and can take a lot of damage but they might not have a lot of wits which means that they are easily confused yes which is a similar system to Numenera for people that would like to reference yeah I only played Numenera once and 
didn't really pay any attention to the it the wasn't cheap because it was actually rather intimidating for what I thought was a simple system it's a simple system mm. on a very elaborate sheet um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I seem to have like numbers within numbers and like, yeah, in a circle yeah. and there was a picture and a number there and a number and oh, no, I didn't that's know that's a graphic designer's happening. dream but it's Numenera City on the bookshelf we will get to it eventually yes <laughs> yeah. um, I'm intrigued I like the setting yep um, as an idea but uh, that's a complete tangent that I should not be going focus ah! <laughs> oh I get plus one to my flip <laughs> <laughs> Malifaux every week yes, um, yes. Um, you then have a certain number of skill points mm-hmm. and your skill points are again dots you will get a individual skill so you, you buy three... Yeah, you look confused by me saying that. Yeah, I was going to say, they're not quite dots, are they? Just they're not dots, yeah. machine, but they're yeah. numbers that correspond to the... If, yeah, cool they work dice. in the same way. They yeah. Each point you buy... It's a dice. It's a dice. Yeah. And the older you are, the more skilled you are as well. Yeah. So mm. it balances out. You'll be weaker uh, physically and mentally because you're yawning on the precipice of old age and death. Uh, but you have knowledge of the things that you can do. God, that's ageist. <laughs> so, Brian, why wouldn't I always want to be an older character? Why wouldn't you always want to be an older character? What's the downside for being an older character? What is the downside of being an older character? What, to counteract the excessive skills and the yeah. increased rank for free? Yes. Your attributes drop. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. We've we've got a mixture, haven't we? We don't have any old animals. No. I'm, no. I'm young. I think my, I'm young. My yak I'm young. young. As I figured, being new, I'd like more dice. To roll, yeah. essentially. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I went for a um, middle-aged reptile. Yeah, and I believe Colin's character, when he can make it, is also mm. mature to mature. Yeah. Yeah. We still yeah. have no elders. No, we do not. Yeah, which mechanically the elders can take fewer hits, mm. but you get almost enough as in a skill boost. To balance you out in your key skill areas. Yeah. 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 Now, it's when you're doing s- other things. Um, you then, you'll, you'll pick a class as well. Yeah. Um, I'm playing a healer, which is a brand new class. Are all the classes new? There are five yeah. new roles yeah. within... Yeah, sorry, roles. Yeah. yeah. yeah they've, five they've, new roles within Gen Lab. They but share similarities, fits, don't they? But There are elements. The Gen Lab inhabitants, the mutants are more primitive. Yeah, that yeah. is the basic truth of it. So you have the hunter, the healer, the warrior, the seer, and the scavenger. Mm-hmm. Now, the scavenger can do a few elements mechanically similar to the gearhead that you get building stuff in Year Zero. Mm. However, they've got much more versatility. Yeah, the scavengers, fluff wise, are finding things. Yeah, they reach into their bag of treasures and hope they've got something useful. Yeah, like the gearhead the- goes, "I want to build a gun." I know what a gun is. I can build one. Yeah. Kevin yeah. just goes, this might be heavy enough to hit someone with. Oh, it's got a hole at one end. <laughs> What's that? It's just falling out. Oh, pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and um, each of those has an individual skill. So for my it's healer... Specialist skill, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So for my healer, um, Murakami, my yak, can make healing potions, which will actually really, really good. Yes, And are. really, really useful. <laughs> um... And I, I like them very much. Our um, mutants back do. in the zone would kill for some of the abilities. The hunters, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The yes. hunter and the healer. That our mutants would kill for those skills. Yes, yeah. and I... there, there is the potential again to mix them mm. um, as well, where um, and bring yeah. more options to I the game. I feel that the um, the roles in Gen Lab are better than those in Mutants. For a couple of reasons, uh, hunters with their skinning ability is really really no. good. Are we talking better, as in more powerful, make life easier, or more flavorful, more I, thought through? Where it we? being me, I'm looking at them from a rules perspective because that's where my brain automatically goes to. Um, but yeah, because because of that, I mean, I I think that not having to roll to make armor from skinning things is is pretty impressive. I, I, it it fits but it's very good. The healer potions are really, really good. Um, the scavenger as ability to randomly have something, like you said, is, is more versatile, so to me is better. Yeah, because I think... In- scavenger is actually limited. You don't have, you don't have to take time mm. like a gearhead does to create yeah. something. Your stuff isn't as good. But, yeah, and there are limits. You cannot... Well, it talks about blunt weapons. Yeah. 
you, you'll get a blunt weapon at most. Yeah. A gearhead can make you a gun, though. Yeah. And yeah. you're going up against robots with lasers in their arms. I, I, I would say this system's more tweaked towards your the actual character's survivability. Yeah. Whereas in Year Zero, you're playing a group. You're playing your a arc. community. Yeah. Yes. So if your individual character dies, you just take up somebody else from the group uh, from the community that comes and joins in. It's a little bit more difficult in general. So they've made the characters a little bit more survivable. Again, this is partly what I want to touch on yeah. with the progression later. So, see, I, I, I think that actually... A, a lot of the Gen Lab stuff is not as good as Mutant. I like the, I prefer the other ones. As to survivability, the thing to remember is fluff-wise, the animal mutants of Paradise Valley have been supporting themselves for generations. Mm. Yeah. They've got these skills, otherwise they would have all died out. Yeah. 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 When you play the Ark, you've just been dropped in it. Yeah. yeah. Your parental figure who's been looking, looking after, after you, has fed you, has kept you clothed and all the rest, is now out of the picture. And you'll have to learn you how to You have to fend for yourself. You have yeah. to develop the skills that yeah. in Gen Lab Alpha they already have and they have elders to teach them. Your elder is now useless in Year Zero. It's a very different situation. Yeah. Yeah. So the roles need to have yeah. different focal elements. Points, and yeah. yeah, focal points. That's yeah. really the words I was looking for. And in Year Zero, the mutant powers that you're, you have individually, although they're random, they tend to be much more powerful. Yes. yes. You get more bang for your buck um, with regards to using sort of the, the mutation points mm. or feral points that they have yeah. between the characters that power these abilities. So, yeah, you might not be as good a... Um, a, at finding food and water being a stalker as you would be if you were a hunter mm-hmm. in gen lab but if something creeps up on you you can eviscerate it with laser bolts from your ass um, <laughs> at which point yeah. at which point uh, yeah so it, i think it it's fine for them to be yeah yeah to be well, different I, well, that, yeah. that's the difference i think that mutations are more powerful than animal powers but i think the roles in mut- in gen lab are better personally yeah. Yeah. Which is an opportunity when you bring the games together, if you bring the games together, yes. for trade and interaction, Very much so. learning, shared learning, but also, speaking with my GM hat on, it's a great source of conflict. So yeah, so there's quite good. I like that it's slightly different. Yeah. Yes. Because so. if I'd have just been served up... Um, a reskin. Yeah, a furry version of Mutant Year Zero. Yeah. Which is um, what I feared Gen Lab yeah. would be. Yes. Yeah. And that, that was, I originally, like Rob, wasn't that excited because the, um, they, they teased the, uh, the the next supplement as well, which is all to do with the robotic creatures or robotic it's things. So tease. Because the translation time yeah. is about a year. But it feels like a tease. Yeah. The Swedish <laughs> stuff. Oh, I, I went on to um, the Swedish Kickstarters copy and pasted everything into a translation <laughs> app online got that roughly there's a few words here and there that didn't translate and or looked a bit wrong but I worked out roughly it was and oh, I fell in love with the robot stuff mm. but that's okay because the kickstarter should be in January or February <laughs> yeah in yeah. the meantime you guys have got to survive Paradise Valley and at the rate we're going it will probably take us about a year of play yeah in so Gen we'll Lab go, Alpha and then we can switch on to a new thing yeah. yeah, ready for the robots. And then we can then, and then combine everything. There'll be Exodus, working title, for okay. the unmutated humans. Ooh. Ooh, didn't know that. And then after that, I can finally get back to being Hosk and surviving everything that Brian can throw at me. <laughs> <laughs> Slaves! <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I thought it would just be... A, when you say human-animal hybrids, it sounds silly. And sometimes we are laughing around the table at silly animal-like things. But but yeah. actually, it's got quite, it's quite dark. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's it's a mutant year zero game. They are very good at dark. Yeah. The the fact that the the watchers take away some of the mutants and the the, the animal mutants and then send them back and they are messed up and experimented on. And, yeah. Or they're never uh, seen again. Or yeah. they're never seen again. Immediately goes. Well, actually, that's quite sinister. We're not playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not. Um, I'm not a big fan. We could, what, we could have if we were all turtles. We could. We could it's have what four turtles, turtles and a should have been. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm not generally a big fan of anthropomorphic animals and things, as it's a matter of what well, animals are animals. Stop mm. trying to make them human. But with this, it is the fact of they are hybrids. They yeah. are experimentations. There, so it kind of makes sense that you can use the animal side and the human side, and it 
does actually work quite well. Yeah, yeah. And I I really enjoy it now. Yeah. Well, so as, as per title to the podcast, we, I mean we're all critical as shit about everything that we do. <laughs> um, yeah. And we, we we generally will drop something quickly if it's not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. No offense to Mind Jammer, but <laughs> <laughs> it it's. This, this is, yeah, it's done well. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah. The other choice that you make then yeah. <laughs> um, is uh, your type of animal, uh, which tribe you belong to, and then you obviously decide what you are within there. So we've, we've got, um, Tash, you've mentioned that you're playing a squirrel. Yep. Who is a hunter. I'm playing a moose tribe yak, um, who is a healer. Yeah, I, I am playing a reptile seer as yeah. my class. That um, can see the future. Mm. Yeah. And then give bonuses should that thing come to pass. I am part of the rabbit tribe and I am a warrior hare. So I'm essentially the fighty class for yes. the most part. Um, but this seems to have a few more defensive abilities than I yeah, remember yeah. from year zero. Um, I've taken one particularly, although we haven't come across many large groups, it allows me to defend myself against multiple two groups with one dice roll. When, when we have to go to the land of dogs, <laughs> that yeah. would be useful because I can see them attacking in packs and it's going to be horrible yeah. if we end that. up in combat with them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think there, there's two more things I'd like to mention about characters before we move on. Yeah. Um, God. <laughs> naming, naming the characters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really like... I didn't like it to start with because I thought it cramped my style, man. Uh, but actually, I quite like it, is that each tribe has a naming convention. Mm, yeah. Now, animals in laboratories that are experimented on... In, in, this is a real world In situation. the real... Yeah, in, in the real world. And each tribe, therefore, has a naming convention. So, Aaron... Who are you? Uh, what's your, your tribe's naming convention and what did you go with? Uh, our tribe's naming convention is to name after footballers. Yeah. So I am called Suarez. Because I'm fighty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fighty and angry. Yeah. Quite like you're not and you've got big Suarez, teeth. Though, are you? No, I'm Suarez n- number nine because there are multiple. So everybody, every male essentially in my litter as such is named after the same thing with a different number of well, is, is it done no. like that or is it you that's are, how we how I've set it up okay. Okay. Yeah. real world it's, it's normally it's litter number so your yeah. litter number is nine so there might be no. a no his no, litter is Suarez uh, but I'm number nine he's of the, that litter oh, he's right, okay. which is yeah. why ten is his brother. brother yeah these are assigned by the watchers aren't they mm. the game mm. is not entirely mm. clear okay it's it suggests they have been given by the watchers yeah whether they've been kept by tradition and it's now the elders uh, that are assigning yeah. names leaves us up to decide because I know some of the rabbits have decided to go against that in, in our game at least yes. they don't like that you've also met a bear named Wildpaw yeah so it's obviously yeah they've chosen they've chosen names. other names as part of the we're not doing what the watchers mm, tell us yeah. um, anymore uh, Tash uh, I um, Casillo and we uh, the rat tribe um, name them after famous composers. Okay, who's Castillo? What did what did Castillo oh, I can't do? Remember? Basically, ah. I went on to fam- I typed famous composers into Google, and that was <laughs> m- I sort of think I spent about half of my character creation just looking through trying to find a name I liked. Yeah, I don't know why it makes me think of um, is it Princess Bride because it's a vaguely Spanish sounding name. Yeah, um, yeah. it. it it probably is a Spanish name. Um, it makes me it makes me think that at some point you're going to get a rapier and possibly <laughs> avenge people's deaths. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's quite good. I, I play Murakami of the Moose Tribe, um, named after um, two of my favourite authors because the moose is... The moose... Moose... Meese? Moose... 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 Um, are named after uh, famous literary figures. Uh, reptile tribe are named after pop artists, I believe. Yes, celebrities sh- in the music industry. Is the That's the idea. one. Yeah. Um, so I just googled that to try and find something not crap, um, and I ended up using the name Thelonious. Uh, I don't know where it comes from or who it's based on, but I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's pre two thousand, Joe. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, exactly. It's a you Thelonious just did Monk. Bieber. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. yeah. So you went with you went with that, which is quite cool. Um, I like that because it actually took a little bit of pressure off. Because sometimes you'll go right, you'll get someone new to a game and go right. You are playing in the world of Farfandugal, and in <laughs> yeah. Farfandugal there are elves and 
men with no ears and dwarves that live under the ground. Oh. What's your name? And Steve. You're like, yeah. <laughs> it takes me ages to correct Fourth to give my character name. names. When I do writing, my characters will often have a name that I use when I do the initial draft and it will get changed yes. as I figure out who they are. Yeah, names are difficult. So yeah. I actually that made it easier by yeah. narrowing down options from mm-hmm. you could name it anything you like to right bang but if something. you're not keen you can cast off your given name and choose a, a, a resistance name if you yes. wanted to yeah, yeah. and so. that's cool as well so that does give you a bit more freedom yeah. and it might be actually that our characters choose um or resistance give each, or names give each as we go along yeah nicknames that yes. become your resistance name perhaps yeah cool um, yeah, the other thing I really like as you create your characters, and these things can change throughout the game. We talked about this in Mutant Year Zero, but it is so good. Um, as someone that enjoys role play more than combat and mechanics, yeah. um, something you do is you you write down the name of all the other PCs and what you think about them mm-hmm. before you start. Now, we kind of started separately, so I didn't write down what I thought of everyone until no. the end of the first yeah. session. Um, but that gives you kind of a basis on, on how to work and if you're creating say a group of mutants that or, um, or animals that are still start together you can kind of work out yeah why don't we not get along because we're both really competitive or we do similar things and we, we, we sort of argue about it or and, and we'll have that in the game as well yeah and we put that <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you pick one of those to be your player character buddy mm-hmm um, and that person, if you risk something to help that person during the game, uh, in during a session, this is done every session, uh, you get an extra point of experience, mm. which immediately goes, pick your favourite. Which yeah. of my bitches do you like the most? <laughs> um, and, oh God, that sounded weird. Um, and then it gives you an incentive and a reward to actually play out that friendship. My yeah. character doesn't dislike any of the other ones in the group would consider them all friends, but has decided that um, Suarez, because we started together and I we kind of joined the resistance together, I feel yeah. kind of responsible for you yeah. um, in that way. So um, I've taken you. Yeah. You two, and you took I my character. Yeah, because you basically I, saved my life right yeah. at the start and I went, no, I need to stick with this person I can't. and again yeah. we started at the yeah. same time so we sort of take each other and I found the same thing happened in Mutant that you had like almost pairs yeah um, which works quite nicely yeah um, the, me- the mechanic makes you think about the relationships act on the relationships it makes them yeah. matter because you are rewarded for them yes mm. so that role playing comes in yeah. it's not just oh you've killed this monster it's worth this many points yeah you don't get points for killing no. the critters that I throw at you no. or talking your way around them but if I no, throw myself we... in front of a monster about to kill Murakami then I get will get experience for that at the end yes. because I've risked myself is it worth quickly something. mentioning how experience works in this game because you don't level up per se uh, no you you, you don't earn, level up at all yeah, yeah you earn it, it's a more open system so it's not levelled but you, you earn five, five experience points you spend them and you can either buy a talent which is the equivalent of a feat in D and D. Yeah, and in other games, you know, things that an ability that you add on. Yeah. Or you buy a point of a skill. And that's it's fairly simple. That's it. Yeah. You'd be looking to earn three or four XP per session. So sort of every other other session you'll yeah. be you'll be getting something. If you have an amazing session and hit everything, then um, you could you could in theory level up every time, what, but that would be rare. What's the match you could get in a thing? Six I'm just or working seven? that out as um, as a go. Did you get one? I make it six. Yeah, you've got your big dream. Yep. you can act on. Yeah, you've got your NPC you hate, your yep. NPC you want to protect. Yeah, PC you've, buddy. You've got your PC buddy. Um, participating, oh, participating tribe. tribe and resistance in Gen Lab. Yes, so seven, seven, zero seven, very yeah. slightly. So many things, you're not going to get all those done in a single session. No, no, no. Not unless your session is 12 hours long. At which point, you'd probably be better off breaking it into two or maybe even three mini which, sessions which and awarding what, XP as you went which along. That's what we did. We, um, we had an eight hour different. space in which to play, so we, we tend to make sessions. four hours of play. Yeah. So I went, This is two sessions, yeah. I gave you XP halfway yeah. through. Yeah. And what Rob mentioned there, the you, you then essentially create 
pull out of your backside, discuss with your DM. Um, in Joe's case, write it down on the sheet, not tell anyone so no one knows. <laughs> um, a An NPC that you don't like. Yeah. Uh, and you get an XP reward if in a session you risk something to mess with them. You then pick an NPC that you do like. Mm-hmm. And you get well, the, the well, same as your PC the buddy. NPC you, you like, the you NPC might, you, you want to protect. Yes. Yeah. So it and, could be someone you don't like. But you mm-hmm. know is essential to survival. Yeah. Or a ball of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> yes let's Co- leave Colin out of it yeah. <laughs> very briefly Colin's character is a is a cat who has a hairball named Barry that talks to him and that's his NPC he wants to protect <laughs> I'm so <laughs> to messing with that <laughs> oh dear conversely I've had so much fun being Barry and putting ideas in his head while you guys are chatting <laughs> yeah <laughs> moving on then um, both amazing and slightly cringing at the same time um, you get uh, an XP point for protecting that NPC risking something you get XP for helping the resistance or your tribe which could actually be working in two different ways yep. They that could come into conflict which mm-hmm. is nice and then your final one is your big dream did you do something in that session to get you towards your big dream yep. and this is really really good because it kind of lasers down into your character motivation why are they doing what they are doing now in my case murakami he went to the top of the biggest mountain in paradise valley and he looked out across all of the lovely countryside and in the distance he saw an even bigger mountain and being a yak he wanted to climb that mountain and thus that was the start of his I don't want to be here I feel trapped they're stopping me going and being what I am Um, so underneath everything actually the main reason why he wants to join the resistance and, and, and get out is because it's his animal side calling to him he wants to go and you know he feels really really good the higher up he goes the colder it is he likes that yeah um, what are the other big dreams just as um, mine's changed twice now I think okay when I very first started because that's actually just what? just before you carry on Aaron that is a thing it's relevant <laughs> I'm not just talking over you like usual at the end of each session you get the chance to change each of these things yes, yes. so yeah. where Aaron says mine's changed a few times rather than not having any context for that you can change yeah, these yeah. things at the end of the session yeah like my NPC was Ishiguru my yak travelling companion yeah um, and we wander around together now she's been holed up in the resistance base we didn't really change that until we met we, we recruited a very very tiny rabbit <laughs> and Murakami is huge that is literally huge it's on his card for his yeah. animal ability <laughs> he is massive and the reason I chose a yak is I saw a yak at the zoo the week before we started <laughs> And it was enormous, and I was like, "What on earth is that cat? Is wrong with that cow?" <laughs> and then looked it up and was like, "Oh my god!" It's, and it was it was as it was huge. Yeah. Yeah. It was like eight foot tall at the shoulder, and I was like, "I just the image of playing something so huge and clumping, and then playing him quite passively." Yeah. Mm. Um, was really appealed to me but we so he's his thing he likes to protect who he calls the little ones yeah. which is everyone smaller than him <laughs> so he's everyone so far um, although I wouldn't refer to the bears that we've met as little ones because I think in my mind they're probably yeah, on the par even if they've not got the medium rule. ones yeah medium hello mediums that's <laughs> <laughs> so, a seer surely yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you could be a medium medium <laughs> Um, he'll have to go for median yeah <laughs> so um, we, we found this very tiny little rabbit who's really eager to join so I was like yeah. I want to protect him because he's so small and, and sweet I want to look after him yeah. why did you change your I can't explain why I changed it okay because it's, it's a spoiler but... okay cool but there were so in response to the events in the game yes yeah it, it changed my character's perspective on something yeah and we um, found that happened in um, Year Zero as yes, well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. So, well, I think we had some characters who wanted to find Eden and then something was said to him by somebody else that made them disillusioned towards that and they're suddenly like, I don't believe it anymore. I want to do this instead. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that your big dream now revolves around making a change within your tribe. Yes. Because that's an interesting one because everyone else, or everything so far is focused on the resistance. Yeah. Trying to do something within your tribe has the potential to get in the way of doing things for the resistance. Yes. Yeah. Which is going to bring lots of roleplay elements in. And yeah. it's another reason why the XP is there to 
boost if you work for the if you risk and risk is the operative word for the resistance yeah. or if you risk your tribe odds on you won't do both in the same session oh. but you don't want to be penalized for doing something for your tribe when it makes sense role play wise when the mechanics reward you for the resistance yes yeah yeah again lovely elegant yeah method of just going we don't want to penalize people yeah. we don't want suffering yeah, that's from, sort of role play. we want Absolutely. to encourage you to role play yeah yeah it's great other big dreams? I just think they're interesting just to, to see people's sort of motivation how yeah. they approach the game. Mine's to essentially to roam free. Um, I don't like my tribe. I don't like the people in it. And just roaming other tribe sections doesn't seem like enough for yeah. my squirrel. It's a matter of I want to get out and explore somewhere new, somewhere that someone else yeah. hasn't been. I want to make and I've tried to word it in a way that fits with the character being a series, is make the visions of freedom a reality, I think is the way I've yeah. phrased it on my sheet. Um, because at the moment, you are... The Watchers like you to stay within your tribes. The Watchers yes. like to control what's going on. Yeah. Um, and so not having that oppression, I guess... Yeah. Kind of very left wing lizard. Um, <laughs> I should be giving you more role play XP. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. Um, oh, fuck off then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, just, so, I saw the I saw the power gaming light flash up in your eyes. And go, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, that that's the currently the the dream of the lizard. Yeah, um, that's quite it's quite good. So we've all got. Different motivations, different things that do this our characters want. Yeah, but it keeps us, it keeps us both sort of tied together and gives us an angle to approach things from. And I love the fact that all the XP is coming from the choices that you make mm. and the things that you do, mm-hmm. not necessarily going. Oh, we've been playing D and D or playing Pathfinder for three hours. We've not had a fight yet. Let's go find something to hit so we get some XP today. Yeah. Now, in the it does tell you in those games that a challenge can be a social challenge and all this sort of thing but and to reward the players for good role play and the less mechanic heavy yeah. section but when you have half a page on that and then another 15 pages on how to work out xp and treasure based on what you fought and conquered and all this sort of stuff it ends up in my experience yeah. it gets pushed right into the background and yeah the rarely... writing style pushes you towards a single because it's more complex it focuses more on that definitely um so i really like that and i like the fact that you get an xp just for turning up yeah because you'll learn something yeah Yeah. well Um, it's only fair otherwise you just could stagnate yeah especially if i was really mean to you and didn't give you the opportunities yes yeah so we'd stop playing at that point i'm sure Yeah. Yeah. yeah But it, well, it, you might not, but we would. <laughs> <laughs> but you could just make the um, the advancements uh, for XP and, and not give that. But it just it just rewards people for being there and being involved. Hmm. And I like that. Yeah. It's just a nice little a nice little touch. I really like that the emphasis on the role play and the character character because you're telling a story and stories revolve around characters. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that's just a really really nice way to incentivize and focus on making interesting characters now is this a good point for me to talk about character progression yeah so once you've made all these characters and you've (laughs) motivated them and uh argued amongst yourselves about who you hate the most yes joe like them oh in the game (laughs) (laughs) yeah so i i like um i like the character progression in this but it does differ from mutant so in Mutant, people died, people joined in, it didn't really matter. Yeah. Because your character in Mutant didn't necessarily improve, it changed. Yeah. Because you got more skills, uh, but you and you could get more powers, but you got weaker because of it. So yeah, it, it's, it's very different in this, because when you gain a new animal power... As is tradition, I am the first to have done so. Um, you don't lose an ability point. 
No. So I won't be stuck at the point of having two, 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 like I was in Mutant, because that game's mean. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with 15 ability points and then going, oh yeah, by the end of it, you're going to have fuck all. Um, <laughs> that was fun. That was my favourite bit. It, it, it's good. <laughs> it amused the rest of us. <laughs> but, but, you know, because there was, there was that little part of you that went, oh, if I die, I roll a new character and it's not like going, ha ha, everyone mm. else is level 10 and you're level 1, people might have a couple more skill points. Yeah. In this, if your characters live on and on and on in the way that Kane kind of did till I stopped playing and Hosk has been doing, mm. you, you're you going to get to a point where there are characters that are just... If your character dies, you're losing... You're not losing a character that's evolved and adapted and but gotten weaker at the same time as getting better. Mm. Um, especially not in, as we haven't encountered any rot or anything yet either. Mm. I think in this you become a much more attached to your characters because they're not getting... Like, by the end of it, I was like, oh, I really like Kane, but he's going to die. <laughs> Someone sneezes at him and he will get an injury. You know, he's, he, he wasn't a, he wasn't as hard as he used to be, even though he had the what I felt was the best power in the game. <clears throat> Whereas in this, if I get, if my character carries on and in, a year's, in, in six months' time I'm still playing the same character, yeah, I, I don't have the drawbacks of losing... Ability points, mm. but I do have. I am going to gain a load of skills. Yeah. Um, so if someone new joins in a, a, as a new character, they may might genuinely feel I'm left proud. behind. Whereas I don't think you ever got that in Mutant. Yeah. It's something I've been thinking about while we've been chatting today, and I think it's an interesting change in yeah. dynamic. When we created new characters in Year Zero, Brian gave XP. Equal to I think half of where we were at the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. In order that the there is a there is a notable gap, but it was not insurmountable. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I think you could do something similar in this. It's just that the game doesn't have its almost it doesn't have its own self balancing stuff unless you are tainted because then you still have that option to lose. Mm. Well, I say option. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> again, with mutant year zero. It's part of the theme, is that the arc mutants yeah. can degenerate. Yeah. You have only got a certain amount of time to accomplish your objectives yeah. <clears throat> before your entire arc may die out. Yes. Again, here, you're in theory more stable. However, yeah. you're risking that stability in instigating the resistance, yeah. starting a revolution. And while I can't speak for the foes in Year Zero, the Watchers... Are bloody nasty. Yeah. Yes. So you can yeah. be. You've I think we're going to get need... one damaged one. Yeah. Bear in mind. Yeah, and we we're going to need to level up to take them off. Yes. Yes, we are. as well. Um, yeah. Which is if you were to go in with arc mutants against the watchers, you'd probably kill half a dozen between you because of the strength of the mutant powers. Easy. But all the rolls are going to start taking their toll. Mm. And yeah, yeah, you'd not now, make it through. I do, I do find because we, we mentioned earlier. I think I mentioned earlier that animal powers are less overtly powerful than mutant powers. Were. Yeah, they've normally each they've mutant one. power can do generally two. Well, most often three different things. Yeah, each animal power, with a couple of exceptions, mm-hmm. have just a single purpose, yes. a yeah. single use. Balancing that, you pick the ones you're having. Yeah, yeah. You each, do. each tribe has five to seven, generally, to choose from, of which you pick two. So you have two abilities versus a mutant starting three abilities from a single mutation. Yeah. Mm. The other reason that I think that um, the powers feel a little bit less powerful um, is that I'm I feel much more wary about using them. Mm-hmm. We do not like the misfire chat. I do you? no, I don't. Um, yeah, so each time you use one of your animal powers, and you roll a all dice. Mutant powers. Yeah, you roll a dice on a one. You then you, there's been something has gone slightly awry. In mutant year zero, if you then rolled another one, <coughs> you would um, supercharge that power, lose an ability point, and develop a new mutation. Yes. In this one. You go feral if you roll a one. Mm -hmm. You develop a new um, animal power, but you also, the animal part of you completely takes over and you get that fight or flight response um, that a panicked 
animal would get. Yeah. And that has caused us quite a lot of difficulty. And it's... You've been very lucky with it, actually, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if but, the hunter had gone feral... We'd never be able to find her because no, no. you always track down the person that's, <laughs> yeah. that's slapped the party member in its way and run off. Yeah. But we're, yeah. we're in an interesting point because I find that's a scarier prospect to me yeah. because you have D6 hours where you can't be helped. Yeah. That's or participate or do much. Now, yeah. because you, you literally you just fuck off into the woods. Yeah. Um, whereas the the more crippling long term you lose an ability point you go oh no but I still did a thing and it was cool and I'm still here yeah yeah um, other things for mutants was always use less use more powers don't use this power again for the rest of the session blah 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 yeah as opposed to have X number of days of not being able to use powers at all or oh. being able to use powers and not being able to talk or not being well, able to use tools yeah. or yeah. The, the, it feels it's less permanent changes, especially on the the, the higher and lower ends. But it it's very harsh middle middle ground changes where yeah. in game time you are going to suffer for a bit because of yeah. things. I mean, we had we had a I think it was a very short period where two of us couldn't use animal powers and the and the other one couldn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I tried to use one of my abilities yeah. to climb a tree, I got up to the top of the tree and I forgot how to be a squirrel. <laughs> um, when I went feral, we were try I was trying to use my tail for balance to help the squirrel across a waterfall and some rocks so I, I, I said look, look take my hand it'll be fine I went feral and then just leapt over the waterfall <laughs> yeah. and fucked off yeah. and, and then I leapt into the middle to try and rescue and went yeah. overly animalistic so I still helped but I went very quiet for a long while yeah. <laughs> became very, and we, we've used you that lost the ability to speak yeah. you could not communicate the way people do you were limited to Grunts yeah, and I think that's body a, language. I think it's a nice it, thing because your nice. characters are inherently two things. They are yeah. a person melded with an animal, yeah. and it, it plays on that kind of that duality, um, which is something that has a wider context within. You know, it, it has relevance to modern life. Are we just animals that can yeah. um, <laughs> can, can, can technology? Yeah, that can can <laughs> think or can justify its actions, or are we something different? And yeah. do we give in to maybe our baser urges for violence and overconsumption and things like that, or yeah. do we do we moderate that? So I, I feel it's quite a nice commentary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a point to it. So it. It has meaning beyond what's just on the page. Yeah, yeah. which is always nice. And within the game, it pushes. The role play because it yeah. has role play implications. Yes, you have lost your human side, or maybe you've lost your animal side. And Joe, that you when that happened to you, yeah, you really put effort into. Oh, how how am I going to go about this when I don't well, have that animal I, confidence? I, I'm not that sure if you. Yeah, I've built my character around being very good at going. No, do as I say. I'm a high rank, dominate, rah, rah, rah. and then it goes. Oh yeah, you can't do that when you lose your animal side. So I've, yeah. Also, I've been talking in a slightly less raspy voice now. My animal side's gone. So I'm not sure if anyone noticed. But oh, I yeah. thought you'd just forgotten to put your raspy voice on. <laughs> no, uh, I stopped it the moment I stopped having my animal style. That's really good. And I will I... do it again when it comes back. I just thought you'd either got bored or it was hurting your throat. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Well, good role play. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I Murakami... Write more things down for the DM. <laughs> no. um, Murakami lost his... He, he A rat tried to dominate him <laughs> and he lost the thing, so he attacked it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now he's not a violent character nor I'm playing him quite passive but this character was threatening the little people and the little ones your shins yes uh, so I headbutted it and <laughs> used some abilities and went massively and lost my animal side in the act of headbutting it with my horns <laughs> at which point my immediate thing was to fall on the floor and apologise to it <laughs> which being, because it was my human side coming out more and being, more being a healer and what was the talent you took I took therapist so you're very good at apologising yes <laughs> yeah. I am amazing at apologising <laughs> too good um it's, my, it's actually my biggest dice pool is if I apologise to someone. <laughs> yeah, and having broken that rat, filling it with doubt, yeah. you then brought its confidence back in almost as much time as it took you to break it, and it later came back to get some revenge. Yeah, I was far yeah. too good at apologising. <laughs> it believed everything I said and blamed our group thoroughly no, for it, what had it, occurred. <laughs> <laughs> but went, then went on to pick on one of the little ones. Oh. 
So uh, don't pick on the little ones. <laughs> but we have a uh, yeah. It, it's like don't, like don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I think of this as a negative. No, but, no. But I... it, it does sway the way I play the game. Yes, I was quite definitely. happy to run around using my powers in mutant. I was slightly wary because every time I did, they almost guaranteed supercharging every time because that was the character and people died a lot. Um, Well, technically, the misfire chart there is much more mechanics-based. Yes. Mm -hmm. It affects your powers and your powers alone. You are more than your powers because you are a character and they were limited to for the rest of the session. Yeah, whereas... Gen Lab goes... For the next few days, however long that takes you to play in real life. Yeah, yeah, uh, it might be three. Well, I mean, we've we've had three or four sessions where Tash couldn't use her squirrel powers. Yeah, um, we spent just... four months in year zero playing three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, this is it. So it, it and that might be a, a, the way we run it. It also but... encourages you in um, Gen Lab. If, as Aaron found, you lose the ability to speak, it says, so the player shouldn't speak at the table either, yeah. except to describe what their character does. Yeah. yeah. And Which I think some players and some groups would find really frustrating. Yes. And it couldn't make left leave you feel like a lot less well, interactions. But yeah. In which case you should be making your character actually interact. Describing what you're now, doing this, more. This, yeah. this almost frustration is part of what I wanted to lead on to with this, is yeah. that... I found that because my animal powers aren't as, oh my god, I murdered a thing, as they were in Mutant, they don't seem as overtly powerful, and I have a much bigger risk involved, because it's not just a mechanic thing, it changes how I play my character, it changes everything about the character, sort of. Yeah. On a one, you potentially lose the character full stop. Yeah. Because if they can't be tracked down. We haven't covered that. We talked about going feral, but... If your friends can't find you and bring you back to your human side... Unless someone can make a heal check, you are feral, you are gone, that is it. And I'm fully expecting us to encounter in some of the more remote... Feral creatures. ...places, feral um, animal mutants that have long, long lost the thing. Rob's (laughs) Rob's staring out the window now. I'm saying nothing. Um, (laughs) And uh, this is the thing. Having not read the second half of the book... I don't know if that's mentioned, yeah. but it sets that up. If someone yeah, goes completely wild and can't be can't be got, that they they go off, they become an animal. Yeah. I could imagine finding powerful animal mutants with f- four abilities that that have just gone completely wild. But it, powerful tainted mutant bears. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah, we are. Yeah, that's where all the rest of the moose have gone. <laughs> have they've all gone mad. Apart from the apart from the one I've made, I. I in the game, I've not met any other moose tribe people. I'm, I'm aware they exist, but, but I'm a rash moose. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it makes me feel that I shouldn't use my powers for potentially... Little things. Yeah. Frivolous use. Yeah. Mm. But the powers I initially took were I, I have a magnificent tail. Which yes. every time anyone mentions my tail, I have to point out on the card it says it's magnificent. <laughs> yes. Um... Which allows me to balance and allows me and can help in dominance conflicts. Yeah. Now, apart from when it's potentially falling over a waterfall and dying, my brain goes, eh, it's not worth using it for the balance because you might go, I tried to get across a fence a little bit easier. Yeah. And went feral and ran off and potentially lost my character. Yeah. So I might not do that. But I also, if it's life or death, then, then it yeah. becomes worth yeah. it. I also yeah. took fast reflexes to increase my initiative. But you don't feel that's worth I it. I don't think there is potentially ever going to be a point where I want to put my you risk my feral powers to increase my initiative by two. I know yeah. it can be a big thing, but because we haven't got powers, having a really quick initiative, when we had someone um, like my character Kane or, again, Hosk, that could murder a thing in a round, it... I don't. I think it might just be because we haven't. I know you can do it with certain animal powers, but I don't then feel that I should. My character doesn't do anything that would warrants that being that much of a risk reward scenario. Yeah, but there could be say a point where um, an NPC has a gun up against um, Castillo's head. So you and you're like, right, I'm going to win this, and I'm going to get them away from it. And but otherwise, they're going to pull the trigger. And I would make that risk because it's my PC buddy. Yeah. At which point, yeah, you're being dragged to do something you might not necessarily want. But so there's. Can, 
but I can see players getting frustrated with feeling that it's not worth using their powers, and that's yeah. the point of playing Gen Lab is to have animal powers. Partly, potentially, yeah. if that's what you're after. As a GM, I have loved the fact that you guys have decided to hoard your mutation. <laughs> uh, sorry, your feral points. It's, yeah, it's an because in a twist to Year Zero, at the start of every session. I count up how many feral points you've got between you. That is my pool for all my characters for that session. The other week, I had 27 points to spend. <laughs> I apologise in advance for our next session. <laughs> I've got nothing, because I can't, I can't yak at the moment. I, I just regained so. with we went, we went, squirrel. I yeah. think I've got seven, so the next one I'll we went nine. from We went yeah. from 27 to, like, four the next <laughs> session, though, because we yeah. all forgot how to animal. Yeah. yeah. Um... And it yes. was. It was. I, I like that. I like that as a balance, and I, I really want good. to bring that into mutant when yeah. we go back to mutant. Agreed. It says in the book that it's deliberately to encourage you to spend your mut and your feral points rather than hoard them. Yeah. You know, it's which is so suggesting that in, in playtesting they found people weren't willing to risk it. Yeah. For the available reward. Oh, so the other reward is the fact that the, the GM gets to punish you less <laughs> by. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. The, that's the risk by. Uh, well, well, no, no, it's well, not. That's a reward. The reward is you get less things. You're not risk. Well, what yeah. I mean is that you're not yeah. risking your character. But you're risking the party. Well, you're risking me being able to really mess with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a reward for spending them beyond the ability that you activate. Yes, the yeah. reward is yeah. you might you have an easier you. session later. Well, I, yeah. I was yeah. looking it's at as interesting. you. Interesting. Mm. Whereas, to my mind, that's. I won't risk it here. But I'll accept the other risk. Yeah. And it's when, when risk we, is a big element we, between the rolling of ones and doing the damage to get the points to do the funky stuff. Yeah. Um, having to gain the XP, you have to risk something. Yeah, well, it, is yeah. An it is an entire system based on rather than rewarding you for things you have done in a... You have conquered the thing, even if it wasn't any sort of risk to you. This this is purely you, you get experience by taking chances. Yeah, that's a nice. Risk Apart from turning reward, up, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing it gives you experience for. Risking something for party members, risking something for the NPC, risking something for this big dream. It's all, it's, but it's all big dream isn't necessarily a risk. You've no. taken a step towards your big dream. Yeah. You've done yeah. something to pursue it. So yeah. if you don't take Implies any risks, you a can, risk. Yeah, but not, but not necessarily, necessarily. Whereas the others all demand it. Yeah. So. There are you can get two XP per session if you don't take risks. Yeah, at which point you're going to lag lag behind. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's an interesting because you're not doing twist on how so it's learning. rewarding yeah. the players. Yeah, I mean I've I was hoarding mine, um, and then I was using large. I was using lots of them all at once. Um, <laughs> now, just a bit yeah, to, to point out how scary this was. Now, <laughs> you like we said earlier, each attribute point is a dice and yep. the skill point is a dice the most you could start in an attribute would be five the most you can start in a skill would be three so if i went and built a really really hitty character i would take five strength giving me five dice three fight giving me three dice and i might have a giant axe i think this is how kane started off he had a big road sign axe so he had two weapon dice as well yeah yeah which which actually is really nice because your weapons can break and it's a bit crap yeah um yeah. So I could have five, ten dice to roll fight. Yeah. And I need sixes. Sixes are good. Yeah. Brian can... Well, what, what are your horns? It's uh, your horns, isn't horns, it? I spend a feral point, and it gives me two extra fight dice. There is no cap on this, so in theory I could spend all ten and get twenty extra dice for a single fight. Yeah. All of which are green, so they don't risk me um, mutating. It's only the attribute dice that on a one yeah. uh, damage you, uh, but they then feed back into your feral points. But you're spending ten feral um, points. But, so, so yeah, you, but I could, in theory... You could have done. And I've got five strength, so as long as I'm not damaged. I also have a point of fight, so I could, in the very first session, have rolled 26 dice to really, really hit something yeah. hard. As opposed to <laughs> ten being oh my god that's that character speciality yeah yes. so it, I've only ever used five um, five at a time is it two have I been it's no, plus it's two, two per feral point yeah yeah, yeah. you rolled fifteen dice oh yeah I've only I've the only other one yeah I've used five I used one for one very big hit on that on the uh, the watcher that we yeah. fought and ended up with bits of it wedged in my horns <laughs> which are now part of my seer stuff yeah um, yeah because there, nice. there is a similar one from horns <laughs> called predator 
Yeah. Um, which allows you to exchange feral points for points of damage. Yes, but that's only on a one-to-one basis. Yeah, but yeah. Now, that, considering that the most a, a party character could have would be five hit points. Yeah, you yeah, can almost guarantee nasty. killing a, a another animal. Yeah. really easily. What I did, what I've also taken is because to me that giant yak that I saw in the uh, in the zoo, if that wanted to escape, it could. Yeah, yeah. Because who's going to stop? An, an eight foot high at the shoulder yak from going where it wants to go. <laughs> it, it, so there's a there's a talent called Tenacious that lets you normally once you've rolled your dice you can pick out the ones that aren't um, aren't successes or aren't ones on the attributes and roll them again to push the uh, th- the the thing, risking damaging yourself with those ones. Murakami can push any roll twice because he's stubborn. So in theory, if I rolled those 26 dice, I could roll all of them twice in the hopes of getting more and more successes. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at potentially rolling like 60, 70 <laughs> times to try and get sixes. <laughs> but risking rolling ones yeah. as well. Because I like the risk-reward thing. Yes. Therefore, I've, I've taken that. I, mean, I like yeah. the, the decisions. It, it Interestingly, I mean, one of, our, one of our complaints about Pathfinder was often that... Um, <laughs> Combat took ages because of the amount of dice you were rolling. Yeah. yeah. Strangely enough, in this, you've gone, oh, I could be doing this. But that doesn't take you, apart from picking up and counting dice, yeah. it doesn't actually take you any longer than so it I takes Aaron to roll four. I don't yeah. need to add all the numbers together. No. They're no. multiplied by three because it was a critical hit. I just go, there's a pile of sixes, separate them out. There's a pile of ones, separate them out. Right, do I roll them again? It's very quick to do. It's yeah. nice. It's, as Rob said, it's elegant. So yeah, um, finally, um, the last thing we want to cover then is how you actually go about having a session of Gen Lab Alpha, how the story is progressed. Now, in difference to most role-playing games, um, both mutant games are to a, a higher degree than most tabletop RPGs. They are player-led. Yeah. The players have a lot more freedom because things are set up, as we called it earlier, like a sort of sandbox. Lots of different things around for you to um, sort of play with or to take your characters towards. Or There's think... something in every camp- compass point. Yes. <clears throat> now, in Mutant Year Zero, everything... Um, ga- in Mutant Year Zero, everything focused around the arc and to generate a plot hook, something of interest each session the dm would flip a card from a deck that would be the thing that threatened the arc that week basically it was a random plot generator you could roll a dice for it instead yeah um in gen lab it actually gives even more freedom to the players which i think maybe makes things slightly trickier for the dm i don't know because if you're flipping a random card I suppose as a DM you're kind of improvising from there. I sometimes flip the card a week in advance so I'd have time to prep, uh, make some things up. Slightly With... different. I suppose it's difficult for us to talk about it here because you've DM'd one and I've DM'd the other. Yeah. So there's no direct first-hand comparison. Yeah, my perception would be if you were to do it as it, as it says in the book for Gen Lab, it would be trickier. What happens in Gen Lab is that it's potentially every session, but we've we've played four or five sessions. We've only done this twice now. We'll be coming up to the second time. Technically, we've only done it once. What we did was split... We broke mm. the phase down. Anyway, yeah. The what? recommended start mm. for a session of Gen Lab is that you start with a strategic turn. Mm. In this strategic turn, the players sit around and, as the heads of the resistance decide exactly what each cell is going to do. Now, that can be things such as recruitment. Yep. Create an extra cell. Gives you more options later on. Spread the resistance that way. Um, you can surveil the watchers. Look for their movements in an area. It will give you mechanical bonuses to operations in following months. You can try and cause a distraction. You can stir up um, discontent with the status quo. 
various other things like that. You all sit around and do that. I'm obliged to go into a different room. It's what the rules tell me to do. Yeah. I go off to a different room so you can discuss in private. I don't know what you're planning. Meanwhile, I'm off on my Todd. <laughs> With, with my own little spreadsheet in your own house planning right? doing yeah no, no. good job I've got two rooms isn't yeah. it yeah <laughs> but I'm off doing my own operations as the watchers so I don't know what you're planning but you don't know what I'm planning yeah and what I'm doing can impact your guys and vice versa and that's a setup I really love yes that's a lovely bit that's what won me over to this resistance story yeah they suggest doing it at the start of every session. We've had one, se- we've had four sessions. We've done it once. What we did was to sit down and plan what you guys wanted to do, and we did that at the end of the first session. I ran the intro that yeah. I referred to earlier for re- with the recommendations from the book. Got you all into the resistance. Then you sat down and you planned what was going to happen. You also have to decide what the players, as a single cell, are going to go and do. Yeah. By the book, it recommends we sit back in, we reveal what each other have done, we resolve those using some very quick and easy dice rolls, Mm -hmm. with a number of yellow and black dice. Yellow give you the chance for success, blacks give you the chance to wipe your cell out. Then, we go off and do yours. What we've done in ours was to decide what you were doing. You told me what everyone was doing, and then we ran your PC operation first. Yeah. I've used what I'd written down already to give me some inspiration, some flavour to what you'd find on the way. Mm. So, for instance, going through bear territory, you were ducking the watchers an awful lot. There were drone patrols and all sorts. That was because I'd written down patrols in the bear territory yeah so I ran that I gave you a flavour of what was going on in the territories you passed through yeah Yeah. whereas if you'd have done it by the book and said and there's patrols in bear and bear territory beforehand Mm. we might have wanted to go a different way yeah I think you'd have looked for a a quieter route yeah Yeah. but actually I I prefer that I think that's a a better way of doing it is that yeah um, because it unfolds organically that way yeah and we could run into trouble telling you and it wasn't like that it wasn't until we'd finished your operation that we then went back to went, okay, we're ready to do the next round of the strategic turns. You're going to take turn two, you're going to send the other cells off. But now we'll work out what the others have done, what effects it was, how many have survived. Yeah. And now you're in a position yeah. so just to a work s- out. Just a slight tweak on what they suggest. But it the feels much more, is the same. It feels much more real. The way yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Um, it, it, it is also the reason that, like you say, we've done multiple sessions and not done this again yet. But it, or well, we've we've done it once since that first time. But that's because it took us a few sessions to play out our own little mission. Yeah, we yeah. decided to go to all the way to the other side of Paradise Valley yeah. and do something that was actually quite complex. Mm. Um, if we had decided to stay in the area that we were in and we were like right we're just going to do some surveillance you could almost break that down into a series of little vignettes and a few dice rolls oh, absolutely. and then give you the thing so we'd chosen quite a a complex thing to do yeah. because we decided to go off to the rabbits and set up a, a new cell over there we could which also is quite have, difficult we could have also just abstracted the travel and I've just gone well you've got this excuse me this done it to vignettes as well but part of what I enjoyed in year zero so much was the zone crawl going around and having to face everything Mm. so we went through the travel in a fair amount of detail yeah it did mean that it took you a session to get halfway across the valley yeah (laughs) the next session got you the rest of the way and performed the tasks that you intended with your operation yeah yeah, and then the third session was follow up, fallout, and making your way back. Yeah, to headquarters. At which point, that's the place logically for me that you would find out how the other cells have done. Yeah, 
Yeah, we which also, is why we did it there at the end. We also chose to do essentially pick what the cells were going to do at the end of a session, so that you'd yeah. have time to prepare for the next one. We haven't done the second one yet due to the fact of I was exhausted at the end of the last session. But you, otherwise, could... we would have had two done, but we wouldn't have yeah. been playing it. Yeah, yet. and we, we what what Rob wanted us to do was to at the end of the session go right next time. This is what these cells are doing. This is what we want to do, which gives him a week to prepare. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I, again is it's a slight tweak, but I think is is fair on the DM. I think it could be quite intimidating to go turn up at the session. Right, we're going to go over there and we're going to assassinate the leader of Dog Tribe, and the the DMs go, I've not really worked out exactly what going on with Dog Tribe. I've got some of the stuff maybe in the back of the book, but that's quite an involved thing. Mm. Uh. Yeah. Um, the more familiar you are, the more confident you are winging things as a DM. Maybe the more background you've already put into it and the, the more you've looked at it and maybe added your own notes, maybe would be easier, I don't know. But there's nothing wrong with going, okay, cool, guys, right. Um, yeah, grab your, grab your food. I'm just going to take 20 minutes to work some stuff out. Yeah. I've done that in year zero where mm. you've gone... I've gone, here is the threat! And you've gone, ah, oh, Jeff and Bob can deal with that. We're going to go over here and chase this plot thread from three weeks ago. And I've gone, oh, okay. Do you guys, you guys look like you need a smoke. <laughs> 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 Quickly scribble some ideas. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I don't think it's been too problematic thus far. And yeah. this session will disprove this to me and break my illusions. <coughs> However, despite the fact you guys haven't worked out what you're planning for the resistance, I know where the ro- where the watchers stand. Yes. I've decided yeah. how much the watchers know of what's gone on. Yeah. And I've sat down with the watcher sheet and done it in advance. Mm. Yeah. So I could, in theory, sit in and listen to your conversations rather than go off and feel like a Larry. Yeah. Um, slash do the washing up. I was going to say, I'll just go and make you do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> cut that bit. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> the um, but yeah, the watches are done. I've decided what they're doing. So at least if you go, we're going to assassinate the dog leader. I know what the watches are doing in and around dog territory, yeah. and the rest of it I can go with what I've read in yeah. the back mm-hmm. of the book Actually. because most most of the tribes, well I say most five of the tribes are described with some suggested stories. Okay. In the, the GM section, the other tribes are left for you to make up okay. for yourself. But we as players don't know that, so we could end and up you going... you don't know which. Yeah, we could end up going somewhere that they've left completely to you. We could go somewhere... I got the feeling when we went to Rabbit Tribe that a lot of what was happening was suggested in the book. I think from a, a DMing perspective, if I was to read through and it would go, right, five of seven tribes? Eight tribes um, have details. I would at least flesh out the other three tribes just so that I'm confident. Um, yes, which is in what case. I do in between. We've had, yeah. well, we're almost two weeks from our last session because we've had a, but a brief interview. If you use the system of, time. Yeah, if you use the system of going, right, tell me what you want to do at the end of the session. If we go, oh, we're going to go to Badger Tribe and do this, and Badger Tribe is one of the three, I'm deliberately not, I'm not fishing to find out. I'm deliberately being vague, mm. excuse me, vague to keep sort of the surprise and such like there um but yeah badger tribe were to be one of the ones that weren't as fleshed out it gives the player the the dm between sessions to to work things out it is sunday now now as we said we didn't we play on a friday last Mm. time we played um i think all of us were fairly tired we went quite late so we didn't want to sit and be strategic when we just got back but we could, after this recording, because we're not playing again till Friday, we could work out our strategic turn and give Rob a little bit of advance. It doesn't take long. Mm. Yeah. Um, you could discuss it in character. Yeah. You could discuss out of character, which tends to be quicker. Yeah. Um, and you can, I, you know, I, I, we discussed it out of character last time, and I, I yeah, yeah, we went back. There were some forth. little bits. I would where... struggle with doing it entirely in character. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's the kind of thing, it's it's not a case of the character's going to sit down and discuss and then make decisions. It's going to be something they're going to come to over a period of time. Mm. Um, the arc felt very much focused on day-to-day survival. This feels more like it's a long-term, you are planning a revolution. Is it a month per turn, they're thinking? That's the, the vague guide. 
Yeah. Although in theory you could play this game, this whole campaign through in 12 sessions. Yeah. I'm expecting us to take Throw a month per month. Yeah, of game, yeah, of game which is time. which is fine. Well, our, and it, it gives us a whole year from the book. Yeah. Our so mission ready for the next one. Our mission took us three sessions. Mm-hmm. So our mission yeah. took us three weeks. Uh, we've missed a week, which is a month. Yeah, and so we we're played there. one month worth of yeah. things. So yeah. food and uh, food and clean water is much more <coughs> plentiful mm-hmm. in Gen Lab because mm-hmm. it's a wilder area, um, and there are systems in place. You know, rabbit tribe isn't going to starve to death, no. or badger tribe isn't going to starve to death. Whereas in the art, that could be a very pressing concern. We have three days' food left. You need to go somewhere a day and a half away and find food and bring it back, or we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And at that point, you're also in, in mutant going, but we haven't left the ark and we don't know where anything is, and yeah. we might all just horribly die. Yeah, so, I mean the the thing that that start that kickstarts the recommended kickstart for the mutant year zero actually is the water the water purifier is broken. Yes, water you can't go very long at all without water. So it's it's kind of there's a huge ah uh, go out and actually it sets it up quite nicely because mm. you're making in this in Gen Lab you're making decisions for the resistance as a whole yeah in mutant year zero you're making res- choices for the arc as a whole but it sets you up as the heroes who save the arc yes we're set up as some of the very first people to join the resistance so we naturally have a seniority there even though we're going out and maybe expanding the reach and pull of the resistance the number of um the number of cells for instance <coughs> Because that's what we're looking to do to start with is increasing the number of cells because each cell gets an action. Therefore, we want more actions in the strategic phase in yeah. the long run. And that's kind of what you do in the resistance. Don't you? you build up a groundswell of support until you're at the point where you can then make decisive moves, rise yeah. up, make yeah. moves, etc., etc. And I'm sure that or I'm sure I'm hoping, kind of hoping that makes it sound mean, but I'm thinking that the watchers will start to become the more we push at them. The moment that we openly attack for the first time, I would expect there to be a violent pushback from the Watchers. Yeah. Examples to be made. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping, and I'll, I'll look to Rob here, your options may change as things go along. Absolutely. I'm going with what you guys have done. Yeah. yeah um, obviously, you've been active in the rabbit habitat. Yes. The Watchers are aware of this. Yeah. So I can go, or well, what would the watcher response be? Well, we know that as part of what we did, without wanting to spoil anything, we fought watchers for the first time. At the very least, the watchers are going to realise that those members of their community, if you like, are missing. There will be, I'm sure, something as a consequence of yeah. that. If they discover the broken bodies of their own... They're not going to be best pleased. No, they're not going to be best pleased. I feel, though, when you play something like Pathfinder D&D, maybe most role players, Call of Cthulhu, whatever it is, the DM comes up with a story and the players play it. Mm. And a good DM will give you hooks and reasons to get involved. Yeah. But this is much more of a sandbox. I like those styles of campaign Mm. more. I feel empowered as a player. When it sits down and goes, what do you want to do? Here is the situation... So we're not you're not doing anything you like at all because you're within the system. It's yeah. like let's fly to Paris and burn down the Louvre. Well, uh, <laughs> that that makes no sense. You're you're still within the world, but I'm going. Oh, what are we going to do next? We're going to do this. We've got this. We've got options. We're we're doing we're doing yeah. things in an interesting way. I feel like I'm affecting the story as much as the DM. The DM is not just making something for us to do. I don't know if this is uh, accurate, as I'm. I've only been a player in these. Yeah. But it almost feels like, especially with Gen Love and this extra sort of turn and everything, <coughs> that while Rob is the DM, he also has a lot of player aspects to do as well. If you're picking your own thing, well, we're designing as a group, but you get to do that too. I've got my own little mini game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we're, if we're, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not missing out on the funky new. Oh my goodness, this is an amazing mechanic. 
Yeah. But only the players get to play it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Whereas in Mutant Year Zero, the players, the, the mini game, if you like, is building the Ark and developing yeah. the Ark. And you're yeah. trying to build a new civilization within the Ark and make it self sufficient because yeah. the Elder is no longer able to provide for everything for you. From the new player perspective, with the fact of I'm used to the role playing I'm used to as being online, two people collaboratively writing a story together, the yeah. fact that we're, um, the player seems to have more control over um, the uh, direction of the story has helped get me into it a bit more. It's a bit more uh, like a transition. Uh, if we, I'd been thrown in and it's a, you, this is what is happening, what does your character do? It, it's very narrow compared to what I'm used to and I would have struggled a lot more with that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you more say in what's going on. What do you yeah. think of it, Aaron? Yeah, I'm... I'm I'd throw me, throw me that. I can't really say anything different, to be honest, because it's the you same. haven't said anything for five minutes. So it's not <laughs> like, we're talking over him. No, he's no. A... He's a person. He has a mind and feelings. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's my brother. <laughs> Gosh, that's cruel. He had a feral power misfire. Yes, <laughs> during, uh, during the thing. But no, no, it's the same. It's it's that that agency. I mean, I got a bit. I did join in Rise of the Rune Lords late game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, should have gone joined in, and which is a huge Pathfinder campaign. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we did the, end up re- railroading you quite a bit, didn't we? On that yeah, a little. It's not. It wasn't anything you guys have done wrong or anything it's just that's the way the system the campaign and stuff is set up so it's like right I play this and I do this thing and it's like I've got not got much like you like said agency to, to break out of those bounds a little bit whereas in this I feel like I could go well the resistance doing this but I want to do this so I'm going away and yeah. breaking apart I'd have to try a new character fair enough but as far as role playing that character is concerned I feel like I can well, naturally let that character develop a bit more the other thing is the scope is there because it's a month roughly for us to issue orders the cells to undertake those orders and report back we've used up a week ten days of that of that month yeah yeah. you were ten days on your operation if we then decide that we want little things. Say Murakami. Mm. I, I've mentioned I've not talked in character to any other moose yet. Yeah. Not that yaks are moose, but they are in the game. You know what I mean. <laughs> ah, <laughs> members of. Members For more information, of re-listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't spoken to any other members of your tribe. tribe. Yeah. I, I might go, Rob. Actually, I think I'd quite like to check in with my tribe. Can I do a little side questy thing? And in between sessions, we might do a little thing online, or we might. Just chat, make something up, roll, roll a few dice, and have something individual happen as well. Yeah, there's scope for your characters to explore things. Doesn't Obviously, it? if I'm going to go and try to recruit the tribe, yeah, that's actually making a cell, for instance, which is an action that we could take. But just checking in on your subplots and yeah. the little there's things that the, are going on can be done. There's and there's nothing stopping you going. I want to go and find the moose. We've made it a bit more dangerous. There's a lot of watcher activity. Guys, will you do me a favour and come with? Yeah. yeah. And you can involve the whole group yeah, so in there's... the side plots and you've then got the favour exchange, but relationships get time to build without a we must get this done for the good of the resistance. Yeah. 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 Which is cool. I mean we've got we've started with Aaron's character who's lost his brother to the watchers. They took him away. Yeah. I expecting that to be a, a strong thing to so, right, let's go and get him. Let's yeah. see if we can find out where he is, we want to get him back. Yeah, yeah. there's the potential that um, we've gone back and we've got back in 10 days. It, potentially we could have gone, well, the other cells, we don't know what's happened with them yet because yeah. they were given a month to complete their mission. We're not going to hear from them for another 20 days. Yeah. So what do our characters do in those 20 days? Do we go off to look at trying to do some of these subplots or do we try and build up supplies so that we've got a cash at the at a couple of points yeah. that we could do in the meantime. You yeah. could even theoretically have subplots with those other cells. Yeah. You could develop the characters in those and have a little subgroups and stuff for you to introduce later on. Yeah, that characters that, that way cool. for yeah, for groups that are wanting to build it up, stretch the campaign. Or, yeah. or you yeah. could you could build each cell as a set of PCs and you then go, okay, right, now you're uh, the eight cell. Yeah, you, you could have, make you, apes, and we'll yeah. play it through. You yeah. could yeah. change it into a much more episodic, that lots of little standalone missions. Yeah. Mm. Whereas if if you've not got a if you've got a stable group 
once a month, but in the other weeks, other things happen and people come and go you go well when this person's here we will do this sales activities and when this yeah. person will do this sales, yeah. 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 and change it around again there's so much scope within this to not it's not just a you do this then you do this then you do this you can change yeah. your animals you can change your powers you can change how you do almost any of it yeah. without disrupting core mechanics too much yeah. yeah you could do all sorts of that or you could literally play this over 12 weeks yeah. mm-hmm. sequentially one session a week um, and you do one thing for yourself in each week you cut out all of the side plots and you really focus on yeah. the that. resistance and you make you make each thing you're doing two or three challenges or interactions yep. and then you you skip out a lot of the travel and you make it really focused you can do with it as you like i like that there's the scope there and it's got a nice scaffolding without being railroady yeah yes and it makes me as a player feel like i'm i'm a i'm someone in the world because human beings or animal mutants have agency they take actions they don't sit in the tavern with the other adventurers waiting for a someone quest. to give them a quest <laughs> and then accept that quest because that's what the God has written, and that's what needs to be done. <laughs> so my head is like five yeah. or six groups of adventurers all eagerly sitting around a table. <laughs> Somebody runs in, they'll knock the tables over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they can't, they can't. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just here to deliver the mead. <laughs> Where is the mead? Has it been taken by bandits? <laughs> <laughs> the first cowled figure to come in from the raid is really going to regret it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets mobbed by See, five. Interestingly, hungry dwarves. You, you have a very similar su- su- system outside of the tavern where there are a bunch of cowled figures going. Well, we can't Oh, have you looked in the window we can't go in there <laughs> Jesus there's groups when they'll kill us <laughs> well, it's I ain't got anything for them to do have you <laughs> let's go try the prancing pony yeah so there's, there's just nice wanted a drink yeah. <laughs> I just I really like feeling empowered as a player and I feel like yeah. what we decide to do is shaping what happens and, and the thing if if you play through a very linear campaign and get to the end, it's kind of like well we did we did the story and the story might be amazing, yeah. but it's not necessarily yours. Our Rise of the Rune Lords experience will be very similar to other groups' Rise of the Rune Lords yes. experience. I can see our Gen Lab Alpha experience being very very different yeah. to other yeah. people's because of that freedom. And the, the same with our Year Zero experience. It's just, yeah. it's just a basic mutant. It, yeah, it. Similar things will happen, but lots of things change. Whereas it's not, oh, this happened, so then we went to this place because that's where the clue took us. Yeah. yeah. That's the, where the plot pushes you towards. Year Zero and Gen Lab, both head... Different groups play will be, most likely, convergent in the end. You're going to get to the same end point, or you hope to get to the same end point certainly for the resistance mm. yeah. everyone playing the resistance will want the resistance to succeed yeah and they go towards the same bit with mutant year zero you've got that there's the meta plot that it all expects you and groups would be able to discuss their experiences of the meta plot but you start from very different ways because you build your own arc yeah, yeah. Right from the start you're choosing yeah. it players actively create those yeah it's both games want player interaction player direction as much as anything yeah. I'm more of a facilitator to the story yeah. than a writer the players yeah. have a lot of buy in because yes. they've created the PCs and NPCs around the, the, their characters because they get to take the actions they want to take not they go to the next town over because there's been a murder and that's what they're expecting mm. to do well it, it's, so to, it's nice. to steal from video game um Words. Terminology. Yes, mm. those things. <laughs> Vocabularium. Um, That's not a word. This, place this where you is, keep your words. <laughs> <laughs> it is a a true sandbox RPG experience. Yes. Because you yeah. can actually go and do what you want. Yeah. It's not one of these, this is a popular role-playing game where you get to develop your character, but you do so by following this flowchart. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. If you guys really wanted and just... T- Gone. No, we're not interested in the resistance. We just want to be animals and run around. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I don't think it would have been as successful. Well, you could just kill us. Well, it's, <laughs> well, I, it's where we did with mine, Jack. You're playing my story wrong. Dead. I went, <laughs> make new characters. Okay, you created your characters. I went. This is the situation. What do you want to do? And you guys weren't interested in the plot as written in that adventure. Yeah. yeah Some. No, I mean, I don't want to go talking about other systems when we're reviewing Gen Lab, but in terms. 
that one didn't work so well. This one could have done. I don't think you guys would enjoy the story as much without the resistance being involved. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice I thing to unify us, well. and and I like the I like the mini game. Yeah. yeah, the extra mini game makes me excited. Yeah, it's lovely. So, and it's really a really like nice it. because you don't have the arc to build. We were sort of, oh, I was thinking it's going to be a bit dull without that, but I really enjoyed the arc building. And then we've got this, and I'm like, oh, I just want to sit down and plot it myself. I'm not sure I'll let you guys play. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, that's good. I was just wondering, unless you've got something else to add to that. Sorry. No, no, no not yeah, really. Cool. Um, yeah, just wondering um, again. Just going to our newest player because I think it's interesting to get a different perspective on this. How accessible have you found Gen Lab Alpha? Uh, for a start, there was a bit of kind of, oh, I don't entirely know what I'm doing. I kind of want to do this. What do I need to roll? And yeah. I'd have to look at another person going, which dice am I rolling for which stats? But by the third session, uh, last time, when Colin had rejoined us, he couldn't remember quite which colours were related to which attributes, but I'd picked it up so much I was telling him, so, and so it had only taken three sessions. You've gone from pupil to teacher in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that you, you, not much else needs to be said. Then really, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's easy enough to pick up as long as you've got one person. I think if your entire group is starting this fresh, if you have one person that will take the role of essentially me or Rob and look at a book and absorb rules, <laughs> um, I I do it what once and know ninety percent of it. Rob does it over a series of weeks and learns all of it. Um, See, I've got to read them and do them at the same time. No, I, I, yeah. can, I can flick through a rule book and I've, I've memorised most of it, so I don't generally don't buy them. I've um, read both mutant books at least half a dozen times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, not cover to cover, because year zero, I only go halfway through the book. <laughs> but, so you read that one twice just to make sure you've used your time. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've got someone like that that will, that will learn the rules and quite happily go, no, this is how that works, yeah. this is how that works, probably your DM, because that's generally the position they take, um... I don't think any group would have a problem picking this up no. because even for a completely new player to read through the book, the book is well written enough that everything makes sense. Even if you didn't have one of those people, I think if you had a bunch of you sat down going, I kind of want to do this, which bit are we looking at? And you flick through together. Yeah. It'd probably take you a little while longer as a result, but I still don't think it would take you more than a couple of mm. sessions. And much less so than almost any other system, I would oh, argue. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, Pathfinder, it took me <laughs> two or three character creations to even barely wrap my head around it for a start. Yeah. And this is the thing with the the elegant the elegant system design is that once you've got the basics it's fairly you, you've, you've got the game things will modify things slightly and change mm. things a bit with something like Pathfinder as you level up you get new abilities and they do change the fundamentals of your character yeah they're, they're new mechanics added on yeah the base mechanics don't change in this so it's actually quite easy to once you get your head around the, the three or four main concepts yeah. feral points uh, damage and dice pools yep. you're pretty much yeah. there yeah. I would have thought yeah. Yeah. obviously there's a little bit more going on for the DM mm-hmm. um, but yeah it's fairly fairly straightforward and even the mini game it's fairly what's the word I'm looking for understandable um, straightforward it, yeah. I, put, I put together a page for you of bits culled it, from the GM yeah. section for you to reference yes and you go right these are the operation options we have this is yeah. the mechanical effect they'll have these are the things we need to watch out for as modifiers and yeah. you seem to do fairly well yeah. what I was waiting I think about five minutes the word, the yeah. word I was looking for was intuitive yes yeah. you are a resistance you have a cell here a cell here and you are yourselves are cells are a cell what do, you, what do you want things to do? Well, each cell can do something. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, so you're going to give an order to each cell, including yourself. <coughs> and then what kind of things do people do in a resistance? Well, they uh, check out the enemy so you can scout. They cause trouble so you can graffiti walls or you can stage open protests, which are more dangerous because, yeah, it's an open protest. Yeah. They can sometimes murder people, but that's really dangerous and can cause lots of trouble and things will die and it will have... And it's it all just makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. there's It's not abstract in any way. It's intuitive. It... it it's really easy to get your head round. There have been many systems or things like this or experiences where we've looked at it and gone, but why does that cause that to happen? 
Yeah. And I don't, I don't think Gem Lab has had that at all with us, and no. like you say, which makes it so yeah. intuitive and easy to understand. Yeah. Um, so, given all of that, then um, final thoughts. What do we think? I've I've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed Mutant Year Zero. Yeah. I did half expect to go. I'd rather be playing Mutant Year Zero when I started playing or it. This is all it's right. More but mutant. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, it's added new elements that I've been interested in while keeping the core aspect of Mutant that I love too much. So yeah. yeah, I really like it. I have enjoyed this far more than I was expecting. To be honest, I was expecting to sort of have a bit of fun, but not mind too much. And then I've got to the end of a session. By Monday, I'm sitting there going, why isn't it Friday? I want to play <laughs> the next session. I've not had to worry about because I've picked up on it so quickly for a start it's a matter of well I'm, I'm going to be live I live with the GM so it's a matter <laughs> of you know if I don't understand the rules I've got that in between time to get my head around them with a bit of help but I haven't needed that so okay. I have just been able to get straight into it and go what do we do next yeah uh, um, 10 out of 10 would play um, <laughs> yeah. I like how you reduce everything to numbers and that, I don't mean that in a nasty way it's just yeah it's the, straightforward the yeah. IT geek in me yeah yeah but yeah no it, it is it's fantastic it's simple uh, it lacks so I enjoy some of the more complex combat mechanics in some of the other ones yeah but I think that comes from the wargaming background that we have um and it's a thing I like, yeah. but I don't feel that not having that makes this suffer. No. There are other systems that I think it does a little bit. This isn't one of them. I think that the the elegance and the simplicity of the system don't detract from the experience. Yeah. So I, I would recommend this to a role-playing group of any um, experience level. Yeah. Yeah. The mutant line, as it's being rewritten for us by Free League and is my favourite RPG, bar none, full stop. Oh, excellent. I Could think I enjoy Year Zero slightly more, because I'm in that edge of your seat, every wrong choice could be the end yeah. for the arc. It's where everyone walks along on that barren plane and goes, shit, there's a pebble, guys, we might go away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mutant, but mutant feels okay. like that. Yeah, mutant feels that little bit more dangerous. The scarcity of resources and things like that, yeah, yeah. comparatively. And with the rules tweaks in Gen Lab that they recommend you bring over to Year Zero, that's going to make it even worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perversely, though, I'm looking forward to that. Oh. I mean, I enjoy post-apocalyptic and the rule set really works with all the themes yeah. they're trying to bring in. I'm intrigued as to how they've twisted it to Coriolis, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> this game is amazing, as in mutant overall. Gen Lab, yeah, I didn't think I'd enjoy it. It's just, ah, oh, this is so yeah. much fun. I'm glad we didn't skip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has been, it's, it's odd for me because I tend to run the game the most. Yeah. Um, but this is the most fun I've had playing a role play game for a very very long time as a dm or as a player um, i really enjoy running year zero because i could just be really really horrible to you um, and it was kind <laughs> of expected um and you guys seem to delight in that because when you survived something terrible oh yeah it was definitely a real I, achievement i could yeah. see that that you were like oh my god yes we crossed that bridge and we didn't die yeah um, we fought three things and only one of us snuffed it um <laughs> It's it's a Dark Souls experience. You 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 live for the victory of ex- surviving yes. more than. And although this is slightly easier to survive, I actually think, yeah. I, <laughs> oh God! Knowing how difficult the Watchers will be to deal with, mm. I'm looking at that going. This is actually, although the day to day survival is not as stressed. Um, it actually frees us up to deal with something that looks even more difficult. If we actually manage to overthrow the Watchers and escape Paradise Valley, I'm going to feel like a king. I'm yeah. going to have yeah. to get a special crown made round Murakami's horns uh, that he can wear. <laughs> but you all that wear. spirals off them. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he would like that very much. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm really, really enjoying this game. Um, I'm really, really eager to play more of it. Uh, which is always a good sign of a good game, um, is that you're kind of as you as you said, Tash, that you're you're going. Oh, I want it to be game time. I want to play again. I want to do the next thing. Um, 
and it's really really hitting that uh, for me so yeah really really good if you're interested in this you don't need to drop a load of money on it straight away rob um there are free previews of both the year zero well of, there is a year zero preview available for free both from modifius's website and through drive through rpg um they also alongside the kickstarter for gen lab have created a starter um starter book i suppose starter cam- it's almost a mini campaign okay it brings in arc mutants there are animal mutants and there are robot npcs okay. so it's actually a sneak preview of what in swedish is maskinarium and yeah. I, um, current working title for the translation is Hardware. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can give it a go. Um, if you have been playing Mutant Year Zero, or if you're at all, uh, you've got any more questions, if there's anything we haven't covered and are rather thorough, um, <laughs> read through, then, then please let us know. Um, you could do all the internet things like liking, scr- subscribing, and sharing, but we want to go off and do our turn now. <laughs> yeah. So, we've got a few hours, we can get a whole session in. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the rest of us have got lives. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we've been the Critical Twits. I've been Brian. I've been Aaron. And I've been Joe. Uh, thank you very much to our special guests, uh, Rob and Tash. Uh, thank you very much for uh, both for joining us and for playing games with us and having fun. It's nice of you, thank you. What a kiss ass. I just don't want him to kill my yak. <laughs> <laughs>